You're welcome to New Day Saturday edition with me, Abna Tebi. It's good to have you join me and we'll be having some really um, exciting deliberations on issues that have made the headlines during the week. We're coming to you live from the studios of TV3 in Accra. We're also live on 3FM 92.7 and we are streaming live on the internet at www.tv3network.com. Dot com. So we'll be running between now and 10 a.m. where we have our panelists um, delve into issues that have made the headlines during the week. So what are we looking at today? Well, we'll be starting off with a discussion on Ghana's fight against corruption. Well, it's an open secret that uh, corruption is an impediment to national development. As such, governments over the years have tried or have waged some anti-corruption crusades. Now these crusades have come with some very interesting slogans. We've had Probitin Accountability, for instance, under the NDC, which was led at the time by former President Jerry John Rollins. We've also had Zero Tolerance for Corruption by the NPP, led by um, the former President John Adekum Kofor. But despite these um, crusades, it seems the canker of corruption persists. What are we doing about the situation? And so President Mahama, following uh, the footsteps of his predecessors, this week attended an anti-corruption summit in the UK that was um, organized by the Prime Minister of the UK, uh, Mr. David Cameron. Whilst there, he granted an interview to the BBC, and in that interview, he made some statements. And indeed, these statements have generated some reaction. We'll be looking at these statements and more. But meanwhile, the leader of the Progressive People's Party, um, that is Dr. Pa Kwesi Indu, is reported to have stated in response to some of the president's um, response in his interview that, quote, the president shouldn't be talking about corruption. He should be doing things that would suggest that we don't like corruption. Now, in a similar vein, the Ghana Integrity Initiative, GII, has called on the president to, again, I'm quoting, stop lamenting about corruption and act. The GII recommends that the president should stop suggesting solutions and implement the solutions he, he is suggesting instead. Now, how are we doing on our fight against corruption as a country? Are we losing the battle? Are we winning? Um, these are some of the issues we'll be discussing when we start talking about the topics for the day. We'll also look at the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, and the National Commission for Civic Education. It seems the two have some issues going on. Now, earlier on in the week, the NCCE announced plans to organize a series of presidential, sorry, parliamentary um, debates and also a presidential dialogue. Now, the NCCE, having made these statements, was quick enough to suggest also or to add that indeed it is yet to secure funding for these plans. But even before the NCCE gets the requisite funding for these plans, the IEA has weighed in on the NCCE's plans to actually get into presidential debates. Now the IEA is saying that, and the IEA we know has been um, organizing presidential debates since 2000. So the IEA is known as a think tank, a policy think tank that is involved in these things. So the IEA is saying that, wait a minute, NCCE, why don't you focus on your core mandate, which is um, the education of the public on their civic responsibilities, and leave this whole business about presidential debates to us. We have been in this business for some time now, and we have gained the necessary capacity or skills to undertake these actions. So the IEA is saying this to the NCCE. But then the NCCE is also maintaining that, indeed, it's a constitutional body, and it is mandated, and for that matter, its mandate is very broad, and so it could very well get into the organization of presidential debates. Now we'll be looking at this whole brouhaha between the two institutions. Is it a case of miscommunication, perhaps, or pure semantics, or indeed it's a pure case of turf war? We'll be looking at this issue to see how best we can get presidential debates and parliamentary debates going ahead of the 2000. 16 elections. Then we'll also take a look at Dr. Mohamed Dubaoumiye's um, comments or if you like allegations about the move of some 250 million United States dollars 
from the Bank of Ghana to a private commercial bank. Now he cites um, Section 53 of the Bank of Ghana Act and saying that the decision by the Ministry of Finance to move this money is in breach of Section 53, which requires that or mandates that the Bank of Ghana holds um, foreign exchange reserves and not to transfer the monies there. So we'll be looking at the debates going on because um, Mr. Tekme, the Minister of Finance, has actually come out to justify the decision and says that that money was intended for the infrastructure um, investment fund. And so that is why the monies were moved. Lastly, we'll touch on, again, Dr. Baumia, um, his religious comments that we discussed last week. Now, we are looking at the aftermath of that comment, what has happened since then. Um, it has come to the fore that some think tank known as the, um, the Islamic Center for Virtue and Social Development has actually endorsed Dr. Baumia's call for religious balance at the presidency. Now, we'll be looking at that issue some more to see what significance such an endorsement has um, as we move closer to the November 7 polls. This is the line app for today, but let me introduce quickly the panelists for today. On my left is Dr. Ahmed Jinapo. He is a senior lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba. Next to me on my right is uh, Mr. Joe Jackson. He is a political commentator. And next to him, on my far right, is Nana Akumia, Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party, NPP. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. So as <coughs> outlined, we'll be looking at a number of issues, starting off with the anti-corruption fight um, by the country. We, we saw the president uh, a few seconds ago in that interview where he made certain comments. Um, I'd like to for us to discuss some of those comments he made. Uh, quickly recapping some, that um, <clears throat> the president says he has given a directive that every contract that is sole source must be subjected to value for money so that the people of Ghana do not lose. Also, he said that um, the circumstances under which sole sourcing is applied are being reviewed and many others. So we'll take it from there. Nana Kumia, I'll start with you. Your general assessment yeah. of uh, these comments. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, let me wish your viewers uh, a good Saturday morning and also my co-panelists, um, some of them old friends whom I haven't seen in a while. It's good to see everybody this morning. Now, the president's comments were that he was doing the best that, that he can to fight corruption. He hadn't taken a bribe. He's prosecuting uh, people who had been engaged in corruption and all of that. But you see, Nanama, if you went onto the street and you spoke to how many Ghanaians that you want and you asked them about their main worries today, corruption is likely to feature in the, in the top three of the main worries of Ghanaians. Ghanaians are likely to tell you that jobs is a major issue for them, the, the cost of living is a major issue for them, and corruption. So the president may think that he's doing all that he can, but really, the expectation of Ghanaians, as far as the fight against corruption is concerned, those expectations have not been met at all by the president. Look, the president said um, he hasn't taken a bribe before. But um, look, there have been people who have actually been convicted by courts of law in this country. And they've still come out and said that they haven't done any wrong. So um, that but question... But did you expect him to say yes? This is what I'm saying. This is a, uh, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. That I, nobody expects him to say yours. And that question really are completely irrelevant. Uh, because you're not expecting the president to say, yes, I've taken a bribe. Bribe taking basically is giving some inducement to somebody in a position of trust to get some undue advantage, whether in their word of contract or whatever. 
I, I don't expect that somebody will go to the president and say, President, I'm giving you a house in Dubai so that you give me a contract. I don't expect that. The main forms of corruption in this country have largely been inflation of contracts, mainly through the single source uh, procedures that have been used. And the examples are many. They've also involved diversion of public monies into whether it is so-called judgment debts or into all kinds of activities that are not in the interest of the public. These are the main forms that corruption have taken in this country. Now, the president says that he is applying the, the law, says uh, some people in the national service scheme have been found to be corrupt and they have been prosecuted. And that is, a, for him, that's a very good example of his fight against corruption. Now, the question that you ask is if some people at the national service scheme suspected of uh, misapplying public funds are being prosecuted, the law is being applied. The question that you ask, so why is the law not being applied in the case of the Wyoming payouts? All those public officials who collaborated with Mr. Wayomi and, and signed uh, uh, letters and authorizations for Mr. Wayomi to get, uh, at that time, $35 million. What has happened to them? Where is the law? All those public officials who obviously colluded to deprive this country of over $30 million payment to Waterville. Where is the law? Why is the law being applied to national service people who have stolen you know, probably small, small amounts, and the law is not being applied to Waterville? Why is the law not being applied to GEDA, where the government's own investigation concluded that people had engaged in forging bank accounts, false bank accounts through which they have siphoned monies meant for GEDA. It is all documented in the investigative reports. Ministers of state who signed multiple contracts, obviously, that defied common sense. All of those people, people who, who collected inducement to give um, what they call service contracts, all of those are documented. What has happened to them? Smarties. He had to take a court of law to order the government that says it is, you know, one of the main tenets is probity and accountability. And he had to take court <laughs> to order you to be accountable, to be transparent. You see? So all of these are difficulties. The president said he had never been engaged in procurement. And so he wasn't even in a position to to be offered a bribe because he doesn't involve himself in procurement. That statement will be taken with a pinch of salt by many Ghanaians because we know, at least in one instance, where the president has directed that a contract be given to some company. We know that for a fact. You know, so the president had been directly involved in awards of contracts to people. So that statement that he hasn't been involved in a uh, contracts and so he had, he had a procurement and so he hadn't been in a position to be bribed and so it, 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 it's not entirely true. And several difficulties. And if you um, could be winding up so we move on to okay. another several, Now, when you move away from all of that, you look at the sentiments of major opinion leaders in civil society, in politics, about corruption. What the Chief Justice has said last year she remarked that corruption today is at a tipping point you look at the founder of the ndc jerry john rollins president Mahama's former boss he has said that corruption today has become a pandemic and that a lot of the thieves in the government go and take positions in the party to protect themselves this is jerry john rollins he founded the ndc Another could bring the Anunu Mesa, a stalwart in the NDC, Alban Bagbin, another stalwart in what they themselves have said about corruption today. I'm not even talking about ordinary, the broad mass of the people. These are key people in the NDC. And what they themselves, their perception is about corruption. You should tell the president that Ghanaians are horribly disappointed 
with the fight against corruption. And there's examples of that. You, you, and when you look at some of the instances, Nanama, you, you the name is Abna, respectively. Abna. <laughs> when you look at some of the the the, the cases, mm -hmm. you would think it's a it's a film script written for children. You look at Sada, where government says it's gone into a joint partnership with a private company to go and uh, produce guinea fowl. Now, government puts up a share of the money, but nobody makes sure the private company puts up a share. So government pays 15 million Ghana cities. At that time, $9 million. So government puts it up. The private company doesn't put up anything. At the end of the day, as we speak, five years down the line, there's no guinea fowl. No, no, please Nobody's be wrapping up and then I, I go on Then the same, company, the same company gets another money, 36 million Ghana cities or so. This time to go and do afforestation. Four or five years down the line, there's not a single tree. And everybody is working free. Mm. You look at the twists and turns of Wyoming, where the president at that time were told, said, don't pay any money. The court said, pay only one third. And yes, so people found their way around all of this and generated letters, uh, attorney general, finance, uh, controller, Bank of Ghana, all of these people. And everybody is working free. It was even an instance where it was clear evidence that monies had been paid into the accounts of one of the state attorneys. And everybody is still working free. It's like a joke. Mm. And I can go on and on. You can, but yes, we'll, we'll come back. We'll have another round of discussions on this issue. But Mr. Jackson, are we losing the battle? <laughs> Listen, corruption, uh, some of us have come to the conclusion that the Ghanaian must be corrupt. We, 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 we've gone, tipping point, we've gone past that. We smell corruption. We feel corruption. We hear corruption. We see corruption. And under the guise that there's no, the law is there, nothing is done about it. I mean, uh, there's one thing I have to agree with Honorable Nana Akonyama, which is that those of us who walk the middle and are not particularly entrenched in one side of mm. the divide or the other, there's one thing we are concerned about. This country is going to the dogs and there's a mad, mad scramble for money and wealth to enrich ourselves. It, it, it is true. When, 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 and, and, and I like the response of uh, uh, the Nigerian <coughs> president when he says, I'm not going to debate about whether we are the most corrupt mm. nation on earth or not. I'm not going to ask for an apology. I'm going to ask for my, our money back. What we demand what the people of Ghana demand is their money back. And until we get, we get some movement and start to see that people are giving us back our money, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's, it's sad. Listen, everywhere you see, and, and please, let's be clear, some of the most corrupt people are not even the politicians, that the technocrats who sit below the politicians, who teach the politicians what to do. We... Listen, we are corrupt. And what scared me really about, and, and I have to take a bit of exception with the president on one thing he said. He says, I am not in a position where I deal with procurement. It worries me. So <coughs> does it mean that those who, what, what, so what happens to those who are in positions to deal with procurement? Who, by their very nature of the role they play, if you if you're not if you're in a position not to deal with procurement, well, God bless you. But what happens to these or those other people? What are we doing? One to make sure that they are not tempted. Two, if they are tempted, to make sure that we 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 we, we apply a stick to keep the rest of them in line. It's 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 almost a cop out to say ah. Me, my hands are clean, oh, I don't know about the others. <laughs> you can't do that. The issue is not about the president. And if the president was taking bribes, God help us all. It's true. If the president of this country is taking bribes, God help us all. But that's not the issue. The issue is, what are we doing about all those technocrats, all those petty politicians, all those guys in different roles of patronage who apply it and, 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 and Nana said that they don't offer it. Listen, I can tell you, they offer more than, sometimes they offer more than just a house in Dubai. <laughs> That's the truth. 
And I'll be shocked even if the president had not been offered something. Because you see, when you talk to people who are coming to invest, people are going to bring money, they think they can buy anything in this country. Listen, I, I have to stop. Because <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, 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 I will go on and on. Yes. Corruption is killing this country. Great. I I'll pick it up from where you left off when you said um, some people have come to see actually it wouldn't be a surprise to you if indeed some people have come to see the president and made certain offers. You know, sometime back when the, the, the um, late um, President Mills, God um, rest his soul, he made a comment that some people had actually come to him with bribes. And then I think um, there was the opposition the, uh, members or the opposition parties actually came out. The NPP, for instance, issued a press statement back then that why is the president shielding such people? He should name such people. Because if indeed people have actually walked up to that high office to make um, demands for bribes, then it's, it, it's actually a serious situation. So indeed, we do have that example in, in, in our history. But Mr. Um, Dr. Jinapo, is it a totally lost cause? <coughs> You're starting with um, the fight against corruption basically deals with y y there are a number of key, key areas. You're looking at building institutions or strengthening institutions. You're looking at laws, relevant laws. You're looking at enforcement of these laws. And then you're looking at the deterrent measures that we'll be taking if people are found to have flouted these laws. We have the Public Procurement Act, for instance, currently. What is happening? Uh, let me say good morning to your cherished viewers. And uh, uh, Marseille, uh, I'm, I'm honored and privileged to, to sit on the same platform with uh, Nana Akumia. Yeah. <laughs> somebody that I really admire. But I think uh, you listening to Nana and uh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, you, you, you read the emotion mm -hmm. and passion to which they speak to this issue. Right. It's a clear indication of the place of corruption when it comes to our development. For me, I think if we are able to purge ourselves of corruption as a country, this country in terms of development will, I mean, it will explode. Because when we talk of corruption, corruption is not just about giving bribes, but it's about also being paid and not doing your job. Mm. It's about being late to work. It's about I, a lecturer, I mean, having to go to class to teach, I'm not. So, I mean, it's fundamental and it underpins the developmental aspiration of this country. And that is where I think the United Kingdom or the Commonwealth, so to speak, must be applauded for more or less once again igniting this debate. And I would not sit here and pretend that Ghana, we don't have corruption. But I think as a country, uh, my interest is how we can try as much as possible to address the issues, address the issues in terms of solutions. Mm. And corruption permeates every fabric of the society. In fact, uh, I'm not you will not be surprised to know somebody who makes a thousand Ghana a month and that person is putting up a mansion and people are applauding him. Mm. Nobody asks the question. I mean, you, you have a hospital like Damango Hospital where you have maybe the storekeeper. The storekeeper is making like 500 Ghana a month. Meanwhile, the guy is putting up a guest house <laughs> and nobody asks the question because we celebrate corruption. It's been part and parcel of our lives. We have not been successful in what? In dealing with it, because we have unfortunately looked at it from a certain level, which for me, even it's outside the realm. Or is it perhaps course, that we don't have a system that encourages we reporting the of... We do have the system, but I don't think we've demonstrated serious commitment mm. in more or less uh, seeing to it that the system works. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Look, I quite remember, I mean, in 2000, when we were having elections, one of the biggest issues that served as the center for the election was corruption. And as a matter of fact, by then, Rawlings was uh, the president of that, at that time. Rawlings was the president of Ghana somewhere around 2000. And that was a time that we had all these divestiture implementation programs that went on. And one of the biggest, I mean, vehicles upon which the MPP and Akufo moved was corruption. In 2008, if you remember, corruption became what? A big issue. So what I'm trying to say is that, look, it recurs every time that we have an election. And it recurs because it has always been a potent force for especially the opposition to, uh, to ride on. And why has it been a potent force? It's been a potent force because it's a reality. I do not want to more or less look at corruption by using the president as 
just uh, more or less uh, uh, the metaphor mm. for corruption. Yes. I mean, the president of the republic is very powerful. The president of the republic of this country, as a matter of fact, he can make and or make you. You understand what I'm saying? And if, if uh, 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 a question is being posed to the president that have you taken bribe, yeah, bribe might not necessarily mean taking money or something like that, sort, but bribe could be in the form of a favor. That's what, that's bribery. So I think we should look beyond that. Yes, we have corruption in this country. I will not pretend that this government hasn't done anything in addressing the issue of corruption. Mm. There are so many instances and so many cases that reference can be made to. But I think we need to do more. We need to show a sense of commitment. We need to show that, yes, we are not going to allow people to what? To steal from the national cafes. You will not sit down for somebody who probably is a head teacher, who makes such amount of money, and this person is putting up what? This kind of house or mansion. When we as a people agree that, look, we are going to do that, then I think it will be possible for these things to be done. But if uh, at the end of the day you become a, a, a deputy minister or a minister, then within two, three years, uh, we see you, I mean, riding in all the most expensive vehicles, building all kind of houses and stuff, and nobody says anything. Nobody says anything. Unless the person gets involved in what? In the problem, then, then how are you going to fight it? You can't fight it. So I think it's supposed to be a holistic approach. All of us have to be on board. It shouldn't be just the government. We as a people, even those who are not in politics, will have to more or less engage in the fight against corruption. It's not just about talk, but it should be more about action. Great. I mean, on that angle, um, Nana, I'll come back to you. You know, the president mentioned, he said, let me quote him, he says, I have expressed the political will and I have said that if corruption is brought to my attention, I will let the appropriate organization investigate it. And if we find evidence that somebody has been corrupt, we will deal with them. Now, moving on from where Doc um, left off, why should it take the president's initiative or instruction for something to be done? Shouldn't the system work? <coughs> well, thank you. Um, who is in charge of the system? It is the president. You understand what I'm saying? The president sits at the top of the system. If the president works, the system would work. It's a very simple matter. But then there are, are, are sector ministers, for instance. There are agencies and departments that have the mandate. Listen to me again. The president sits at the top of the system. Mm. So he has ultimate responsibility. There may be line managers. There may be ministers. There may be DCEs. The ultimate responsibility. The person whom the people of Ghana, the, pe the people of Ghana, vested executive authority to make sure that our laws work, that our systems work, is the mm -hmm. president. It's, very, it's a very simple matter. So the buck, as they say in America, the buck stops with him. All the levels. Look, if you drive around Accra, Kumasi, and there's an unauthorized structure. There's a public official who is being paid to make sure that that structure is not there. If that structure is there, some public official is not doing their work. That person can easily be found. If it's this your area, I think this is Osuklote, there's a, a, a building inspector in Osuklote uh, uh, submetro. There's a planning officer in Osuklote submetro who has to make sure that that structure is not there. If that structure is there, it means that person is not working. That person has a boss. So if steps are not taken to ensure that the building inspector or the planning officer at Osuklote works, who should be blamed? Now, my, my, my brothers made uh, uh, um, some comments that I thought were interesting. This business about uh, corruption goes down the system. Public servants are engaged in it and, and all of that. Um, my, my doctor talked about people being late to work as also corruption and people not doing the job. All of that is true. But who does the box stop with? The top. If you are the minister in a ministry and people come to work late, if somebody at the admin department comes to work late, it is your responsibility as minister to ensure that people do not come to work late. If you yourself you go to work late, you will not be able to see those who have come to work late. Mm. So, uh, you see, when we go to a place like Nigeria today, as we speak, because of the attitude of President Buhari, it, yes, Buhari, <coughs> there's a certain 
see change in the perception of corruption in Nigeria just because of the man's attitude, one person. Mm. Mr. Mr. Um, Nanakumia, please let me introduce our guests who joined us now. He is Mr. Kujo Eduasari, um, a presidential staffer at the office of the president and a former MP um, Adenta constituency. Um, Honorable Kujo Eduasari um, joined us, a presidential staffer at the presidency. So we'll have him give his take on the issue and then we carry on with the discussion. Now, Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you. Before you joined us, we had looked at um, the president's comments, you know, on the sidelines of the anti-corruption um, summit in the UK last week. He had made certain comments that had generated a lot of debate, and we're looking at that within the context of our attempt as a country to fight corruption. Now, the president, in his um, address, cites, for instance, the unearthing, the recent unearthing of the malfeasance at the National Service Secretariat as one of the indicators that his government is actually doing um, some work on the corruption fight. Now we've raised these issues here. Is that a good enough indicator of government's um, fight? Thank you very much. And uh, I must apologize profusely for coming in rather late. Um, I was caught up in a domestic uh, issue, and I apologize. Mm. Um, matters of corruption. I knew um, this weekend and uh, the next one week will yeah. be about. Uh, we will all get the opportunity to discuss thoroughly right. uh, matters concerning corruption because um, the president was invited for a summit on uh, uh, corruption on the subject and this was uh, before even the program started uh, a loose comment by uh, the post premier uh, elicited all manner of criticisms across the world because um, a passing comment by the uh, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister of uh, uh, UK, mm -hmm. you know, that Af Afghanistan and Nigeria were fantastically corrupt and uh, that generated a lot of heat on its own. So certainly uh, to have our president as uh, one of the key features, especially from Africa, uh, certainly was going to come our way. And knowing our president very well, his eloquence and uh, his so far, what he's proven to the world, um, his stature on the governance structure around Africa uh, has endeared him to the heart of a lot of uh, international uh, high profile community. So uh, I'm not surprised to uh, the euphoria that has surrounded his. Uh, uh, interviews and some of the issues that have come up. Is it euphoria? Of, of course, certainly, mm. yes. I mean, this is a subject that uh, for the opposition for now, uh, or the, the main opposition party, uh, seeks to be hinging on to, you know, they think they can ride on a, a subject like that to uh, pave way for them at the elections. So unfortunately, it's crumbling right in no, their but, faces. But the question yeah, is, I'm I, coming, I, I'm I gave an there. example, mm. yes, could we? The, the, that, that position is crumbling. So what we, I'm talking about euphoria. Mm. Okay, I'm addressing the issue of euphoria. Why the euphoria? So this is like the last straw you have, and that straw is also not sw uh, helping you swim ashore. So this is the last time. Let's deal with it as bad as we can. Let's, let's, let's try and make some capital out of it. So some of the issues they are raising, for instance, answers that he gave uh, to this gentleman called uh, Peter Koche or something, BBC, uh -huh. uh, Focus on Africa, on whether or not he are taking bribe. That has seemed to have taken the center stage and they are taking him on for the fact that he hesitated and this and that and that and that. But for me, let's even put that aside. I think that um, for matters of corruption, the national service issue comes to mind. At least it is one issue we can all point our fingers to and say that yes, nobody, um, let me see, in, in other cases you find new journalists and other people unearthing a particular issue 
raise it and blow it so 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 big that it becomes an issue that government has to intervene for instance uh, this smartest issue it came as a result of uh, a member of parliament bringing it out this woman also came from parliament and all of that so some it it, it came out from other people here we are with national service it was an in-house thing we as a government found that something was wrong we were not prompted by any newspaper or any person from the opposition or it wasn't an expose by any uh, the investigative journalist or whatsoever we found out the president uh, attached the uh, national security and bni to investigate and we all know the outcome so for him to cite that as uh, an example at that particular place. Uh, but I cannot also say that that is the only uh, example that one can mm. uh, cite as having tackled corruption. Uh, we talk about this uh, Woyume issue. We have uh, uh, structures, okay? The legal system is there to support some of these things. So you cannot just expect that the president gets to know that this person has gotten himself involved in a particular issue, so he should just walk in there and, and, and seize their property or yank whatever they can yank out of them, throw them in jail, and that's it. We have legal systems that support some of these things. And you know, as much as you accuse the person, the person also has the right to defend themselves. So that is a preserve of the legal system or judicial system to manage. But sorry to cut you, yes. but just so we, we, we deal with the issues before moving to other areas. Mm. Yes, indeed, there's a judicial system which you need to mm. work with time mm. and the laws that mm. govern that and all. But with the way you made, for instance, um, the, 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 the decision of the Supreme Court was way back in 2013. Right. And it's taken so long. Yes. So that's where the agitation is coming from. How who's, come it's taken so fault long? Is it, is for it that? the president who is not doing his work or is the court? system that the person involved is using to if you like delay the process or whatsoever you can't fault uh, the executive in that regard the prosecution the attorney general has processed each case if the case is in court the attorney general cannot overly uh, overbear itself into the matters of of, of of the judiciary we all know sitting in this country just a while ago an individual did his own expose on even the judges that we had, some of the judges that we have who are supposed to be sitting as, uh, what do you call it, in the, in the center, the, the, the law, they have the law in their bosom. Mm -hmm. We all saw what happened. And this can only happen when you have a government that is ready to let certain things happen. Okay, because that person, as we all know, got some support. When I say support, not necessarily fans or whatsoever. The government threw its weight behind uh, him and gave him the necessary, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, immunities so that he can carry out his investigations without any uh, hitches. So when you talk about uh, fighting corruption, what else is expected of you? Okay, and the funny thing is, um, we having the issue regarding uh, GIDA. Um, the Agams group and those other mm -hmm. companies we were supposed to pay some money so far in the last three or so months we had they've cleared their, 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 their table okay that is what I heard I don't know how true that is though but that is what I heard is that the person we have to throw in jail that we want then let's push for that. There's a recovery of the money that we wrongfully paid So for me, them. these are the, 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 the examples that we can clearly set and say that, yes, we are working mm -hmm. towards it. And it's a process. It's not something, an event that you just decide one day that from, do, from this day forward, we, can't be, we, we won't be corrupt. Okay? <laughs> this issue about our example of uh, Buhari being, you know, his, his presence is cost. Who says... Nigeria, Buhari has been in power for close to a year, okay, and it is this same uh, before <laughs> the same summit that Nigeria was, uh, 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 what do you call it? The Cameron said Nigeria was 
fantastically corrupt. But, same, but in that same video, yes. what Cameron is heard as, as saying is that indeed, or maybe some other person in the recording is saying that this particular president is not corrupt. He is actually doing a lot. Is if you listen about, to the tape clearly, is it, is it so about, about the individual so president it, or we're talking about the country? No, we're looking you at see, the leadership. Wonderful. So the leadership, President Mahama has been around for the past three years, almost four years. Mm. President Buhari has only been around in less than a year, okay? So we should wait and see. Please, for me, I think we are, we are talking track record. Let's wait. Mm. Let's see what clear steps will be placed on the ground mm. to fight the corruption that we all know Nigeria is so engulfed in, mm -hmm. okay, which has gained international uh, 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 notoriety, if, if you want to use that word, okay? And you cannot compare... Like Ghana in any way in that context, okay? We in Ghana sit here and we make it look like there is so, so much corruption around. I, I don't want to sit here and say it doesn't happen. It does because the people themselves, the people, you talk about leadership, yes. And I think that leadership is not just at the top. It's not at the apex. Leadership at all levels has a lot to do with it. Okay, so where I sit, I am a leader in my own right. So whatever I'm tasked to do, I have to ensure that it starts from me downward. Okay, so if we are tackling cor corruption, we are not only looking at po things that have to do with politics. Mm. Do you understand? How does it, even in our own churches, don't we read stuff that's, you know, how do people account for monies, public monies that they put together? Mm. What systems have we put in place to check how churches operate, how they use their, their money, the offering that uh, they collect? Is it their bona fide property? Mm. Do they have to keep it? What laws do? So please, corruption issues, I think when we are dealing with it, we shouldn't just look at a particular government or what the government seated, because if I also want to recount. No, that's when fine. I mean, we, we, <laughs> we are discussing the president because of what has happened in recent times. So we're yeah. using that to yes. delve into the bigger yes. picture. But so it's not like we are nailing no, the no, government somebody is nailing. Before I got into the <laughs> But we can, we can <laughs> okay. set a different agenda on this platform. So I agree. To, yes. If you set the agenda, the parameters must be in that regard, so that somebody doesn't take the advantage to just run a government down mm. and then I have to keep my... Uh, arms can I make a very well, yes. Um, yes. Uh, Please come in. Uh, thank you. The point is that I, d I don't think it is anything wrong if the spotlight is mm -hmm. focused on the leadership. And I think uh, Nana made the point that, yes, uh, when you have an institution whereby the minister comes to work late, it trickles down to what? Yeah, the, 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 the subordinates. Workers, right. it's, I think it's a legitimate uh, uh, claim. But the reverse is also true. Mm -hmm where if the minister is not doing his work and the subordinates are the type who more or less do their work properly, what they do is that they hold the minister accountable. Mm. The issue of smarties, for instance, is one that uh, is a clear example. You know, I mean, a, a, a member of parliament raised the issue. The issue went to court. You know, at the end of the day, even the documents in terms of the probe was not made public until somebody went there. So the point that I'm trying to make is that it's supposed to be two-way affair right. where people in authority are supposed to demonstrate that they are doing the right thing but the citizenry must also what hold those people accountable that said when it comes to the issue of uh, using the president as a case study or the spot being put on him i think that is what it's supposed to be in the sense that the president was voted into power to more or less move this country to a certain direction the opposition wants the president's job and they are professing what alternatives so if corruption more or less is reduced or is even purged out of our society under the leadership of the president, the president is definitely going to take what credit for that. No, no, no. Yeah. I agree with you seventy mm -hmm. percent. Okay. <laughs> why, why not him? Seventy yeah. percent yeah. yeah. is that this op so opposition, yeah. you know, the lead the, the leading yes. opposition party by its its in itself yeah. is such does not have their credibility. Do you understand? I'm talking about moral authority. Let me just land. Let me land, 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 land on the Wyoming issue. Moral authority. Yeah, let me land I on mean, the Wyoming issue. Yes. The Wyoming issue, you see, it's a political issue, mm -hmm. even though it's a legal issue. If you remember, in 2010, 2012, the Wyoming issue played out so much during our what? Our elections. But from the results of the 2012, I can say for a fact that the Wyoming issue has lost relevance in 2016. 
It's not relevant. As an that's election it. issue, an election but for the Ghanaian, for the Ghanaian it's still yes. important that's because it. we need to that's recover it. all that money. That's it. The executive has a role and an important role when it comes to what? The fight against corruption. Most and definitely. I can say, look, Nana Kumina will attest to the fact that if today the MPP is in power, the way they will treat the Wyoming issue will definitely be different from the way what the NDC will treat it. Very well. Now, Nana Kumia, um, one of the reasons why or the rationale behind the enactment of the Public Procurement Act was to curtail or address um, malfeasance within public sector procurement processes. Now, the PPA, the Public Procurement Act, according to the president, is being reviewed. To what end? Because like you rightly earlier on said, there's been the thing about single sourcing or sole sourcing, which has caused a, a great deal of um, loss to the country by reason of certain, um, if you like, circumvention by people. How well can we deal with that issue? And indeed, is it an issue that we are actually circumventing the provisions on single sourcing? Well, thank you, um, Abena. Let me answer your question directly, then I'll make a few comments about my good brother, Edouard Sari. <laughs> now, the situation that we face in this country is not about laws. It's a very basic, simple point. It is not about amending some law or bringing some law. The problem we have in this country is that the laws that we have on our hands, we don't implement them. So the ones that you have, we are not implementing. If we're implementing even 60% efficiency of our laws, this country will be a totally different place. If we can just implement the laws on the books, that's it. The public procurement law, the president himself violates the public procurement law. He himself violates it. How so? The office of the president, at least in one instance, has directed the award of a contract to a company. What is that? That's clear violation of the public procurement law. You see, so it's not about piling on more laws. It's about implementing the laws. My friend Edouard Sari talked about national service people. being. No, no, no. Once you've made that allegation, I would want you to perhaps put out more details about that. Which company are you talking about? Oh, you remember the West Blue case, the single uh, custom single source uh, destination inspection. Mm. The letter that the letter from the office of the president directing the Ministry of Finance to ensure that they, that contract is given to a company. Mm. And clearly, say it had the president's signature. As being that, and Mr. Dwesser, you're here, so I would want you to. I mean, if he's saying, making certain statements that you think are. He had the president's signature. We, let's, let's verify I'm say, that. I'm saying to you. Let's verify that. A letter from the office of the president mm -hmm. directed the Ministry of Finance to ensure that that contract is awarded to one company. Are you challenging that? I thought you were going to pull out the letter. Are you challenging that? Because you know it. No, pull it out. No, do you? Are you denying that or not? No. I saw you fidgeting with your file. I thought we were pulling out a letter. <laughs> Can Let's we carry see. on? Well, she asked for it, so show it to him. Can we carry on? Yeah. Yes, please, Nana. No, no, this carry gentleman, on. <laughs> he works at the office mm -hmm. of the president. I have made a, a categorical <laughs> assertion mm -hmm. that that office of the president wrote a letter directing that the contract be awarded to one specific company. Is he denying that? Well, the point is, typically, he who alleges has now, to prove. So, now, well, it's not, on, it's not his now this responsibility to necessarily yes. It's about that churches are corrupt. Mm -hmm. So what? Is it public money? We're talking about public money. His money, your money, my money. Money that if I don't pay, I can go to jail. Mm. Yes. That's different from money that I voluntarily give to a pastor. Listen, that's a completely I was Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Menace. Mr. Jackson. You, you can't talk about yes. menace. Jackson. Yes, indeed. That is the point. I think that's we need to correct. Correct. So no, don't Mr. Dwesari. Mr. Dwesari, allow me. Correct indeed, them. Mr. Dwesari was situating the fact that indeed corruption has permeated Oops. all sectors. So that's why he gave that example. I don't think he was really <laughs> equating 
what happens in churches to what happens <laughs> at the governance but level. You see, yes. The impression that my brother uh, gave by that example was to say it happens you, everywhere. You have so chosen. It's it, a system <laughs> issue. <laughs> Mr. Dresser, please. If it happens, uh, let the, the context play. <laughs> Nana, could we please move on? Let's not belabor the point. I think, maybe, yes. Maybe the rest of us, we don't understand context, but that's okay. Now, um, the Duasari and the president happen on some national service people they claim have been prosecuted. I don't know if you have heard, you Abna, you are in the media, I don't know if you have heard of this famous prosecution of national service people. I know that the chief justice has set up a, a special court for criminal prosecution and the chief justice is complaining that since the courts were set up there hasn't been any prosecutions being brought before the courts. The Auditor General reports, we all see it every year, comes and goes. We don't see any prosecution. Meanwhile, as we speak, the, the Chief Justice has said But that this is a recent court. development, I mean, really. Let's the, be the, the Chief Justice court? Uh, no, no, no. What the, not, the unearthing of the multi the National see, Service see, Secretary national This one does not attract them. Can I? It's no, not no, no. You allow him to. It's not you a allow him to. Can I, can I, can no. I this one was an in-house thing. When these people are supposed to go to court, it doesn't attract the MPP. Uh, Mr. Dressai, please, please allow him to finish. He was people are in court. Please allow him to finish and then we carry on. Mr. Dressai, please. determine who or when court cases Mr. Dressai, court. please hold your horses and let him finish. We'll come to I'm, you. I'm, I'm so happy that you're asking him to keep his hat on. There's no, there's no fight here. Now, the issue is very simple. You say that you are prosecuting some national service people. Mm -hmm. I am saying that I have not heard. It doesn't I don't, mean it's not happening. No, no. Oh, but I haven't said it is not happening. Please, Please carry on. Now. Let's hat, not belabor this, this issue. Yeah, but there he is. This hat that you are wearing is nice. T take it easy. Keep it cool. <laughs> now, Abina, I'm saying that. I have not heard. It doesn't mean it's not true. Right. I don't know if you, Abina, you have heard of this famous prosecution going on in the courts. But let's assume that it is going on. The law is being applied, national service people. So my, my question is very simple. So why is the same law not being applied in the case of Woyome? Where the monies are 10 times larger than mm. the national service. Why are the same laws that are being applied to national service people, why are the same laws not being applied to SADA? Where the monies involved are way, way, way higher than the national service. Why are the same laws not being applied to GDA? Why are the same laws not being applied to Smarties? Because obviously we know the law and we can apply it. So why are we not applying it? Smarties has been, has been ordered to refund. Um, is it 2.5? So why were the national service people not being ordered to refund? Abina. It is your money. Uh, it's okay. our money. Well, it's your money. <laughs> <you're the problem. laughs> Mr. George Jackson, you were coming in. <laughs> yes. And then we'll, we'll, we'll take a break. And you, you know, the, this issue of corruption... I mean, I will be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, it is, it gets me agitated. Take it easy. I'll take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will try. I will try. I'll try. I'll try and take it easy. But there's an Akan proverb. That's a very important proverb in this process. It says, "A nam prawa, or You see, let's look at two issues here. Look at the Chief Justice. Look at the issues that came up with the ANAS investigation. Look at how, in order to satisfy the perceptions of the ordinary Ghanaian that I'm dealing with this issue and dealing with it head on, head on, even sometimes in the opinion of her own group of lawyers and, and judges, thought she skated at the edges of the law in order to get these judges clearly seen to be corrupt, punished. On the other hand, as a Ghanaian, I want my money back. I want my money back. You know, all this talk about law, I'm not a lawyer. I'm only, well, this is I am a finance person, but I'm not a lawyer. As a finance person, this is all I can tell you. Money that was paid out to say Woyomi, 35 million, something million, whatever. Today, that money is worth four times. No, no, 35 million dollars. dollars. 35 million dollars. 52 million. Yes, 30, 35 million dollars. Today, 35 million dollars is, 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 is just 120 million mm -hmm. plus. 
Even if he pays that money back to me, forgive me. It's my taxes. I pay tax. It's my money. It's all of us our money. If I didn't pay that tax, I will go to jail. And so when I hear that he took that money and he's bringing it back, and now he tells me I want to pay over three years and I'll pay this. No, but Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry if I'm rude, but listen, it's worse than you are putting it. Mr. Wayome, he's been asked to bring the 52 million exactly. no, one second, that he took in 2010. Today, that money will be worth about 150. That's but if they ask him to bring the 52 that he took in 2010, even that one is not bringing it. That's so my point. Is, is so, you, see, you see, so we want our money back. We want our money back. See, and there's another I'll, issue I'll, here. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, please. When, please, when please. you land, then I'll, I'll you land come very in. quickly. There's another issue here. I've lived in Nigeria, right? I lived in Nigeria between the years of 20, uh, 2006 and 2012. I set up a business in Nigeria. I ran it. At the end of 2011, I sold the business and came back to Ghana. I'm very proud of my experience in Nigeria. I've seen, I've stared corruption in Nigeria in the face. I did federal government contracts. So when you talk about corruption, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you, anybody who thinks that Ghana is not where Nigeria is, or maybe even getting worse, is a liar. Wow. Hmm. And, 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 and I'm saying, that, I'm saying that, that, somebody that's quite... I, said, I lived in Nigeria. Hmm. I did federal government contracts. I did private sector contracts. I was in the software industry. I set up a software company. I sold that company. I worked in Abuja. I worked in Lagos. I worked in 30 different states. And I'm telling you, what I see in Ghana scares me. So it's not about, the, it's not about, let me tell you where we are and why we talk about the ticket to pain point. In Nigeria, it is now accepted. They, they've lived with it and they've stopped complaining about it. Here, they are, we are still complaining about it, which is what gives all of us hope. And we should not stop complaining about it. We should not stop crying about it. And we should not say that it is because we have a press or a media that can cry about it, so it is not bad, it just looks bad. It is bad. And it is bad from somebody who has been both at the receiving end and at the giving end. Very well. Um, Mr. Dresser, please come in. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 we, when we sit behind your cameras, we may be... Oh, please, we are not sitting behind you. Very well. Either, either way, either way, from where you stand. Either way, yes. Uh, it depends on where you're standing or sitting. Okay. Um, I like to tell my viewers or whoever is watching me what I know to be the fact. There may be other things flying around, propaganda, all kinds of um, ideas to just paint somebody in a certain way and all of that. But I also owe it to viewers to place the issues where they belong. You see, this Woyume issue, tell me who in government you expect to go and take the money from Woyume. Who? To go and yank that money out of Woyume. Mention that person's name on this set. Mr. Joseph. Wait, wait a moment. Wait a moment. Okay. Okay. Tell me who is in government. President, vice, uh, chief of staff, whoever, who has the capacity to go to Wilmer's house and say, I've seized your building, I'm taking this, I, I mean, this is yours, I'm, I have it. Well, you? in the interest of putting out facts for our viewers, I think really yeah. there needs to be the distinction between the state and the government because we're looking at the AG who is mandated. And the AG do... can go and take the money. No, but it's through due process yeah. of law. So, where is the case at this point in time? Who is handling the case? When you say due process of law, who, who is handling it? The case is in court. Okay? But the, the decision was made in 2013. Yes, the decision was made. So tell me what uh, the uh, Attorney General is supposed to do under the circumstance. If a court gives an order. There's so and, uh, many ways a lawyer an example. can retrieve me, or recover money. Give me an example. So many. Minus the court's backing 
I'm not a lawyer. So that's why you apply to the court for Wonderful. those processes, Ganeshi orders. Yeah. You could have rates. And I mean, the last time on this show, I think right. Yao Pong um, mentioned the fact that indeed, during all these proceedings, mm -hmm. Mr. Wayoma was driving to court in a flashy car. Right. And any legal practitioner, a private legal practitioner for that matter, would definitely go have their eyes set on such a car, see, for instance, that, to attach it and then sell it as one thing. Exactly. But you see, these things <laughs> see, put a certain the perception mind out there. Of Wayume, do you think he feels he's guilty? No, but the court has no, no, pronounced. Wonderful. Listen, what, so, sorry, I think we need to no, stick to the facts. Wonderful. So the court has pronounced. When I, when I, I have a copy of the, uh, the court judgment mm -hmm. here. Yes. It's 2013. Right. The court has pronounced on so this matter. I'm asking who exactly you think has the right to go and yank these things. It's not about but, yanking. Yes. It is following the due process of the wonderful. law. Wonderful. And who is not following the due process? In other words, what are you saying? That I am saying that the due process of the law is being followed. Okay, but the person also, being a smart person, is using the same law to keep himself free of some of these issues. Okay, because he has made applications to the court for uh, some reliefs and all of that. And it is the court that has the right to look at these issues and determine the outcome. Well, okay. let me read something from, from, the, from right. the court's or, um, judgment, yeah. which was an admonishing to... Um, lawyers mm -hmm. in the public service and for that matter the AG department the, this is what the, the court said we would like to make the point that lawyers engaged in the public service and who are called upon to represent public institutions in lawsuits have the responsibility to ensure that public funds are not improperly expended through their default mm -hmm. and that they must exhibit the same degree of diligence as is required of a private practitioner there cannot be one standard of professional conduct for the lawyer in the public service right. and another for the lawyer in the private practice. Right. And I think this has been the agitation of many Ghanaians. Right. That why the seemingly slow process of getting the monies back? Because we are all practicing so lawyers. We know what law, happens so when a private legal so practitioner wants to get money mm. from a debtor. Mm. And I think that's where the argument is coming right. so from. So whom do you fault in this case? Is it the, the lawyer you are 14 or it is the government you are 40. so please this thing you've read is very useful but for me it doesn't apply to the case we but this are is the case in which this particular yes. phrase or this particular paragraph yes, was, but was, was, saying was, was, that was put i can't go and stand in front of a, a judge because i'm not a lawyer and i'm not i don't no. I, yeah so as a politician mm. my role and as a member of the executive my role is to ensure that we use our channels which is the uh, attorney general to prosecute our issues. Very well. Okay. Now you see, when the, when, the case, when the case goes to court and the court is handling it, Woyome has made an application that gives me three years to stagger payment and all And of why that. doesn't what? the AG come to oppose such an application, for oh, instance? When you think the AG hasn't done that, is that what you're saying and you're here? Okay, very well. Now the point is... Is that what you're saying here? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. AG hasn't done that. No, no, no. I'm not saying that, but no, you are citing please, an example. Get yourself updated on the records. Very of the well, Mr. Eduasari. Uh, okay. Well, very quick. Yes, I think uh, let's, let's let's say that uh, uh, the perception, which is uh, the NDC has one way or the other been reluctant in the pursuance of this case, uh -huh. and that has led to where we are today. Let's give that I mean position the benefit of doubt, and I I put this question to. Uh, the opposition or the MPP or whatever it is that today as a stance, let's say the MPP is government in power. How do you collect the money from Wyoming? Uh, uh, Dr. Jinakwa, listen, uh, Abena, when did, was that Supreme Court? 2013. That was 2013. 2013. So three years down the line. Now, mind you, it is not even the government which took the matter to the Supreme Court. It was Martin Amidu. The government was sitting idle. Now, you have a court, a, an order from the highest court of the land. You can't enforce it. The last time the president spoke at the Flagstaff House, he said that that was about one and a half years after this judgment. He said the day they were going for Woyomi's properties, that was the day Woyomi filed something at the Supreme Court. You remember? One and a half years after the, this judgment. They were going for his properties, and then on that day, he filed some process at the Supreme Court. So the president said their hands were stayed. Do you remember? Now, since the president spoke, two weeks after that statement, the Supreme Court has ruled on that application from William. 
So you have three clear years. An order from the highest court of the land, the government of the day, the president, the vice president, the chief of staff, the attorney general, the ministers, the presidential staff, men of the caliber of Idwasa, they cannot enforce the Supreme Court order. That's what they are telling us. So, so the, the question is, if it was, once I, if it was <laughs> their money, if it yes. was Idwasa, it's money. For being personal. No. Okay. Okay. If it was I mean, their, their, their money, and the Supreme Court has given order, they'll be sitting down for three years, saying what? But because it's taxpayers' money, and because there's, you know, one justice of the Supreme Court looked at the matter and said, look, this matter, where you be, what have you? When you look at it, you can't understand it unless you see it as a clear plot. And the words that the Supreme Court justice used was, this clearly is creates loot and, mm. and shit. But, but Abner Nasta has an answer to my question. I'm saying you today see, as it stands. Dr. No, no, you see, um, um, <laughs> and <laughs> you wait, know, I think... How you collect the money? Wait, wait, just a minute. No, let me just ask <laughs> you. Very well. No, no, no. no, 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 no briefly, and then Mr. Jackson yeah, comes in. I'm you, you have the laws. You have the judgments. What are you waiting for? Look. Who enforces look. the judgment? Who? You don't know. No, you tell me. No, let's not, let's not engage in this matter now, because we need to wrap now, up. And now, then, let me, let me yes. Ask. Look, recently, <laughs> there was talk about the government going to take some property belonging to Mr. Wayo. You remember? Mm. Then we were told that actually that property has been already has already been collected by a private bank mm. who Mr. Wayo may owe someone. Mm. So a small private bank is able to enforce judgment in, in the matter of debt against Mr. Wayo and the government of Ghana. With the dual salaries, they're who are <laughs> very well. Mr. Jackson, please come and in and then. Mr. Dua Sari, please just a minute. I think tempers have cooled down somewhat. So now we are wrapping up, but in wrapping up, we are trying to prefer some solutions to this canker. I'll start with you, Honorable Dua Sari. How do we deal with this? For me, I think the president has set the tone. And as a leader of this country, I think his demeanor and disposition on matters of uh, corruption, um, as uh, uh, we all had them at this uh, uh, summit, um, the declarations and the, uh, whatever they have committed themselves to, I think it sets the tone for all of us in our own small way to also, you know, guard and guide what we have as a people. Um, with the issue of uh, the procurement laws, I'm sure there are some defects. People, whatever it is that we do in this country, people will find ways to uh, push it to one extreme or the other. So if there are flaws around it, I think we should just uh, look for mm. a way to review the system. Mm. But sole sourcing in itself, for me, if you hear people saying sole sourcing and everything is sole source, they're single source, it doesn't break any law. That's one thing we should come to terms with. Sole sourcing doesn't break any law. Just that we should ensure that value for money is always the uh, watchword. And that the okay. conditions are met. Certainly. As so I think law. that uh, we are on, on the right course. The mm -hmm. president um, endeared himself. And the, on the continent of Africa, I think Ghana stands tall Very in well. the matter of fighting corruption. We believe that between now and the years ahead, um, we will all take whichever levels we find mm. ourselves. We will make it our priority to ensure that corruption is stemmed uh, in a bad. Very well. Now I'm Doc. Well, I think it's very simple. Commitment. Commitment and leadership. Mm. Uh, this country has, uh, I mean, to borrow the words of uh, Cameron, some of the fantastic laws that you can think of in, mm. the, in the fight against corruption. But unfortunately, the laws are there, but uh, they are not adhered to. And uh, unfortunately, we seem to put a blind eye. The point needs to be made that as a country, we've, we've progressed in terms of the fight against corruption. Mm and we've put in certain measures and mechanisms to address them. But we still have a long way to go. Mm. We have a long way to go, and I think uh, 
the onus lies on the president to, to I mean, leadership by example. Very well. And that is where I think uh, the point being made by, by uh, my colleagues that when you have leadership that is showing the direction based on his uh, behavior, I mean, it trickles down to other people. I mean, if you have a, a, a head who beyond all reasonable doubt is one who does not tolerate corruption, you'll be scared. But mm. I think it's also important for, for the person to show commitment in enforcing the laws. Very we well. should not and cannot continue to celebrate corruption. Very well. Doc, uh, Mr. George Jackson, you know, take... I, I wish I could speak in such uh, lofty terms as my colleagues. I can't. For you, it's all doom and gloom. I can't. I can't. I'm almost, I almost want to descend to tree because maybe if I speak it in English, Uncle <laughs> it's not, it's not, go complicated. My, gra my grandmother doesn't I've speak. Ended. My grandmother doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I've ended. Collect our money. Those, those people who have taken our money and have been, have been clearly, clearly, clearly by the court of the land indicted whatever you want collect our money collect mm -hmm. our money corruption is bad enough those that are caught having we have no excuse for letting them get away with mm -hmm. it get our money back for us very well nana abena you know it's worse than we have been talking about solutions let's let's, let's assume that mr Wayome has got lawyers. He's a superman. So the government is finding it difficult in collecting the money. Let's assume all of that. Rule of law, due process, blah, 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 blah. Let's assume all of that. Nana, Nana, Abena, the question is, those public officials who sprung the payments to Wayome, what's happened to them? Because, 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 because Mr. Oyeme didn't himself go and break into government accounts. The law should decide. So, uh, no, no, no. Let's, solution what's and then yes. What is the solution? The solution is the law. Do you, is this compliance do, is this, uh, with the laws? Is this uh, 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 space physics? The law is there. <laughs> you are applying it in, in, in national sense. Yourself. Mm. You say you are applying it in national sense. Apply it in way of very well. The, the, the people, your own appointees, who sprung the payments to Wayome, what's happened to them? Very well. That's why Wayome is not Great. paid. So <laughs> that is why Wayome mm -hmm. is not paid. Good. Mr. Ekumia, uh, we thank you for that. And we'll be moving on now to look at the IEA and NCC Bruhaha. Really what's happening with the two institutions to organize presidential debates, uh, parliamentary debates or dialogues. Is it a preserve of a particular institution is what we are looking at today and we are hoping to find some answers to that. So the NCC earlier on in the week announced plans to actually um, undertake these activities. But it also stated that it's yet to um, receive the requisite funds for that or secure. But then IEA is coming out to say that, well, just focus on your <coughs> mandates as provided by the Constitution and leave people or institutions that have done this for some time to continue with the work. So we are asking. I'll start with you, Dr. Jinapo. Oh, 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 <laughs> I, I, I thought you'd have started with the politicians. I'm giving them a break. I mean, I'm giving them a break for now. They need to, they need to catch some breath. For first, yeah, he's, he's, he's spoken to that. Well, OK, let me let me let me let me let me Exactly, yes, so I'm starting from you. What, is there any particular institution that Dr. is Jinakbo, supposed to... When they brought you your coffee, <laughs> did you say they should give it to the politicians? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll carry on. Now, Doc, your take on this well, issue. I think, uh, 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 Abna, it's an interesting topic. Mm -hmm. Interesting topic because, uh, for me, the IE has, uh, over the years, contributed positively to the deepening of democracy in this country mm. through these presidential debates. I think the first time that we had a presidential debate was in 2000, where by then Professor Mills was the certain vice president. I don't know if he did participate. Uh, first the time? 2000. I don't, they rem all I did. don't remember. They, did. they all I did, I yes. All the presidential okay. candidates did, yeah. That was in, I think, 2000. 2000. No, no, the, the, 2000 first was 2000. the first one was in 2000. Mm -hmm. I'm not very sure if Mills participated. I'm not very sure. But uh, in 2004, when Kofor was uh, the president, did he participate? 
that President Gufo participated in 2004? Uh, I don't think so. He I didn't. don't think there was any debate. He didn't. The reason why I, and even just recently, in 2012, if you remember, President yes. Okay, so let's get the record straight. Yes. In 2000, President Mills uh, didn't did participate. Not. And I, in I 2004, Kufour um, Kufour as well didn't Did do, not yeah. participate. It was in 2008 that we had a presidential debate where the two political parties, yes. I mean, participated. Yeah. Did and you say the two political parties? The two major political parties. Look, okay, I, I let's just get it straight. Two, I think there are two political <laughs> parties in Ghana. We That's don't want me. any issues. I think, you know what, you know, no, I'm, I'm saying it. To come no, no, it doesn't, uh, 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 Honorable, I know there are two political parties okay. in this country. That's my position. Very well. But in 2012, if you remember, prior to the demise of His Excellency the President, the President said that he wasn't going to participate. Mm. So, technically, there have been only one presidential debate, which was 2008. Which had all yes, candidates present. The major well. political parties. The reason why I make reference to these years is that, I mean, 2012, President Mama did. But, but before President yeah, Mama, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say, Mel, President Mills said he wasn't going to participate. The reason why I make reference to this is that there have always been an issue when it comes to this debate in terms of the neutrality of IA. And as a matter of fact, if President Mahama had not participated in 2012, the issue of even a presidential debate in 2016 would have been moot. It would have been dead. But today, it's come up because President Mahama did participate. You see, the point is this, and I started by indicating that the IE has contributed positively when it comes to the IE debate and stuff mm. like that. But I think that the happiness of 2012 during the debate and post the debate has for me, in my own respectful opinion, has made the IEA presidential debate what irrelevant. Happenings irrelevant. I, I can tell you the reason why. Sure. One, you remember Ayarikov? Mm -hmm. Ayarikov, I mean, during the debates, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, anybody who watched the program can say for a fact that the gentleman there was there for a mischievous what reason. You remember the, 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 the hosts? Right after the debate, I mean, my good old professor that I admire so much, uh, Professor Nana Jinajima, right after the debate, she's appointed a minister. I don't have a problem with she being appointed a minister because she's competent enough to handle that position. But when you have a person of that caliber hosting a program of that sort, and right after the person is given such a position, then one is tempted to doubt the true neutrality of what the host. You remember Kodio Ponkroma? Kodio mm. Ponkroma, I mean, somebody who was celebrating this. I'm not saying that it is anything wrong for them to be given positions. I sit on this platform. But let's look at this. Sorry to cut yeah. you. So you had um, Professor Nana um, Okokajima. Yes. yes. And then Kodio Ponkroma. Uh, yes. And they've all gone to the two yeah. devices. Yes. So what it Doesn't means that is that. Doesn't that symbolize no, that some neutrality what, or no, objectivity? No, 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 no. What it means is that it was an arrangement. It means that the <laughs> main, no, what it means is it was an arrangement. Oh, the, 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 no, that's how I say it. Mm. Look, I come here to sit on this platform as a neutral person. I may have my heart for a certain political party, and I definitely vote. But when I sit here, then I leave. Then tomorrow, President Mama is at Winneba, and I'm wearing NDC T-shirts. You understand? Ushering him around. When I come and sit on this program, no matter how objective I am, your viewers will not take me serious. That is the point that I'm trying to make. So at the end of the day, when you have these happenings, and today we are being told that we are going to have another debate, people are going to read so many meanings into it. It could be you are not going to be the host, mm. but people are going to what? So they say, what happens post this debate? So I think, look, uh, if you ask me, I mean, there are two individuals who are very powerful within their political circles and stuff like that. But if you ask me, positing what the NCC is saying, vis-a-vis -vis the IU is saying, I can say that, look, it looks as if 2016 would have a presidential debate. Mm, mm, it looks the very much, is, it looks it, very it, much it, likely. It's, it's, and, it's I very, and I will okay. not be surprised that if we do not have a presidential debate. Mm. And even if we have a presidential debate, I doubt if it will be IE. Moving forward, I think if we want presidential debates to be part and parcel of our political discourse, we should come out with a, a, a plan. I mean, we should, we should make it compulsory. We should come out with a, a, I mean, presidential debate committee. Of course, they normally do have presidential debate committee, but mm -hmm. I think we should, we should make it part and part. But where we have a situation whereby 
one person says I'll go, another time depends. And you know, interestingly, most times it's the position that is always pushing for it mm. because it gives them the opportunity to have, to right. showcase what they, mm. are, they want to do and stuff mm. like that. Often when you have a sitting president or a sitting government, the sitting government, unlike President Mahama, usually do not go. And I wasn't surprised that President Mahama came in because you look at the time, the time, and you are just coming, this was a very good platform. But I think there are so many doubts in the minds mm. of the good people of this country, and legitimately so especially because of the happiness of 2012. Very well. Um, um, uh, Honorable Idrasari, mm. the NDC has indicated that, well, it's not going to attend any such uh, debate mm. if it, it should be organized. Um, are you likely to perhaps change your position or that the final take on the matter? Well, um, as it's already said, um, it's only a fool who doesn't change his mind. Mm. So. We, for now, we may have a position which uh, suggests that we may not want to participate, but it, it all came out, uh, up as a result of the manner in which this whole thing uh, became public. Because we thought that as a political institution, and rightly so, uh, when an um, institution like the um, IEA is planning a, a, a program such as this, uh, right from the onset, there will be some kind of correspondence or some kind of communication between the party and themselves so that we will be able to present them with the program lineup of our party or let's say our roadmap towards the election so that they see how they can dovetail mm. their programs to shoot what we are about to do vis-a-vis -vis other political parties, so there can be some synergy. But here we are, they just lined and launched their own programs and gave dates and timelines and other details that, I mean, the main players, and I'm, I think the Nana is but here. But it's, it's a private um, institution. They yeah. have their own calendar of yeah. activities. Yeah. Would they necessarily need to consult? Well, so if you can you have your own uh, program private and whatever then you don't need us to also say we will comply mm. okay or when we say we won't we won't your, your program doesn't shoot ours you don't have any issues with that because the time they've uh, even prescribed for this program they should know that that is the very time that most presidents around the world will be converging in new, uh, new york for mm. the united nations general assembly Okay, and our president is a, 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 a what do you call it a regular feature in that particular uh, on that particular calendar. So I think that if consultations were properly uh, made, all these issues would have come up. They would have had opportunity to discuss thoroughly to see where the the there can be. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Space for the president to participate and all of that, vis-a-vis mm. -vis other consultations with the parti uh, other participants. But if that doesn't happen, and what we rather hear from the is it the executive director is the, the particular posture that suggests that hey, the public wants you to uh, play a, a part in it. So this is what we have. So you better take it or leave it. If that posture. Is, 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 is the stance they are going to take, then we are free to, to, to tell them that. But in the, the previous, in the previous debates, did they consult you? Certainly. I mean, other than that, other than that, they couldn't have been mm. arranged because the president, by then, the president was the president, certain. Okay, he had programs. Mm. Okay, and to, the, to let you know, the president has, as we sit here, his, his uh, appointment for the next six months is already determined. Okay, so sometimes you push a program and he has to knock off other programs just to make way for other emergencies and so on. So you don't assume that in the next six months he's a president, certain president. He has his, uh, what do you call it, assignment, his mandate as president assigns him to so many programs and uh, he doubles also as the presidential candidate for the NDC. So this is a time that time or a period that time is of essence. So you don't just get up and assume that. And this is a party issue, mm. okay? The president is not going there in his capacity 
as the president, president of, of the Republic of Ghana. The leader He's of the going party. there as a leader mm. of the NDC party. Mm. So when you say you have gone to consult some people at the Flystaff House, which is not, excuse my language, the extension of the party. The party as an institution has a chairman, has a general secretary, has a whole secretariat that correspondences can be made between them and responses can be retrieved. So for me, I think they have started from a very wrong note. They, 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 they better repackage themselves and put up a better posture in this whole thing. Other than that, I think it will work out for them. The NCC is coming into the picture because probably they've also awoken from some whatever. <laughs> no, Mr. Jasper, this, please hold on to the NCC a bit. We will we'll delve into that <laughs> right, specifically to see right. this issue about the jurisdiction or the, the clamor for uh, jurisdiction, if you like. Mm -hmm. But before I go to um, Nana Kumia and Mr. Jackson, please let me read some messages from our viewers and listeners. Okay. Um, someone is saying, this Ni Obobi from Accra. Hello to you all. I don't get the logic of Mr. Eduard Sari. Does it mean that when armed robbers are caught, they should only return their booty and be and go scot-free. Honestly, we should audit what presidential staffers do at the seat of government. This is Niobe. Um, Abna, let's set the record straight. Ghana is a corrupt country. Nobody expects the president to even tell his trusted wife that he has taken bribe before uh, either, neither do anybody, does anybody expect him to sit on the platform of the world's broadcasting station and say so. So for me, that question was irrelevant because the interviewer was very much sure that he will say no to his question. Um, what is the president's special approach to fight against corruption? Calling people who have been alleged corrupt by the ordinary Ghanaian on the streets after the World Cup to the presidency is called an approach to fighting corruption. Then Ghanaians are dead and gone already. Um, please tell Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe Jackson to control his temper. Those of us watching outside need, uh, he says, well, uh, decent discussions. Oliver Jan from Pokwasi says, Abna, please ask Mr. Kojo Edwasari, why the president asked the interviewer if he meant Mahama as a person or Mahama as a president before answering the question. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with the president when he said it's because corruption is discussed in Ghana, that's why it appears to be high. Every Ghanaian knows the state of corruption in this country. I think this government is the most corrupt. I think this, okay, it's a repetition of that. I disagree with Nana Komia's statement that he made about corruption against the president. Nana forgetting that Kufour said uh, it's date, it's, it, it dates back to Adam. NDC government is doing well. Uh, we exactly will exactly deal a lot. I, I don't get that. I'm sorry. Abdullah and Kumar said, please next time make it uh, quite clear, and then I'll read everything. Nana Komia, I will give you May. So as example, Royal May case in court, nation national service personnel, and others. I'm sh this is coming to point out that government is doing something. Please, Nana Komia, all you say is not true. Bring evidence to prove. Nana. Don't use the political take action against the president. I don't get that. And Ampon Sam Michael says, Edouard Sari talks too rudely. Let him calm down. The program is being watched by men of dignity. Thanks. And this is from Kumase. Um, Abna, if we don't vote this NDC out, they will loot Ghana and finish Ghana. The sole sourcing contracts they awarded. Uh, the award that is just too much is Aliu from Bully in Wild West. We'll put um, the brakes here and then get to Nana and Mr. Jackson for your take on the IEA NCC issue. Um, my question, following from what Mr. Jina or Dr. Janapo said about the choice of the um, hosts or moderators, did that really mar the quality, if you like, or uh, the neutrality of, of the IEA platforms? the debates. Thank you, Abina. Abina, let me answer your question directly before I move on to uh, a few comments. Now, if you talk about the neutrality of the host of the IEA debate in 2012, and you base your neutrality on the fact that the lady was shortly appointed a minister of state, and so you doubt uh, the neutrality of you should also take note that the other uh, moderator is also, has also turned out to be an N NPP candidate. So how does that reflect on the IEA? It's, it has nothing to do with the IEA. Now, we must congratulate the IEA. There was a space 
which wasn't helping our democracy. The IEA, it's a private institution, they came in to fill that space. We must commend them. It's a private institution, their own energy, their own strength, their own uh, resources, no states, no government support. They fulfilled a certain uh, 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 requirement or a certain uh, utility in our democratic arrangement. And it's a, it's a testimony to private sector initiative in Ghana. Of course, the IEA is not a perfect institution. There may have been lapses. Even in America, whose Democrats, I mean, they've started presidential debates about 50 years ago. Even today, you hear complaints. So it's not perfect. But they've done well so far. Um, I'm a little sad this morning on this matter because I wasn't too sure what the NDC stance is as far as the presidential debate is concerned for this year. But it has become clear to me now that the NDC as a party is not going to take part in the presidential debate if it is organized by the IEA. It's become very clear. And I'm sad about it. Look, there has been progress, even though there have been losses, there have been progress. Now, there's a general, the for, even the format is improving. Even now, the president, the president Muhammad must be commended as the first sitting president to take part in the IEA debate. So it shows that there is progress going on. Yeah. It will improve at, as it goes. But what I'm hearing today, that um, uh, it has to be done by the, uh, decided by the party, the, N the NDC party. And that if you go to the Flagstaff House, you haven't come. But the president is the leader of the party, or is he not? Now we are being told that he will coincide with the United Nations in New York. So obviously, the president may not be able to have the time. And then we are being told that the president's calendar has been fixed for the next six months. He's president, and his calendar has been fixed. So obviously, there is no space for the president's calendar for a debate. Who said so? Then um, <laughs> you also hear that um, you also hear. Who said so? Can, 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 I, can I finish? Just a minute, please. No, correct him. What can, did he? Yes. Can I finish? Let I him mean, finish, Edouard and then I'll address him. Who said so? Edouard Sari, you. Yes. Two minutes ago. Yes. You've told us about the party not being consulted, mm -hmm. and that if the Flagstaff House has been consulted, that is not a party. That's what you told us. Yes. You've told us that the, the, the timing is going to coincide with the United Nations meeting in New York. Yes. That's what you told us. Yes. You told us that the president's calendar has been fixed for the next six months. Mm -hmm. well, That's what you told us. And I said that, if you want me to add, uh -huh. I also said that yeah. it will be proper, that proper communication goes on. Is that not what I said? It was, sir. How do you just sit in your office and fix a program for me to attend? When I'm not involved, then you don't yes. know my program. It you don't know my but talent. I, I have said that in my view. Yeah, so please don't conclude on that. There's a, there's, a, there's a space that they can explore. I'm saying that. If they consult. Exactly. Very well. So let's I mean, carry uh, on please then. Underline yes. that. It was, sorry. Uh, Abena, <laughs> it is very clear to me that the NDC. Oh. Would that's not a take part. Well, that's, you that's your interpretation. But he's yes. saying yes. that, that yes. there's, a, there's opportunity yes. to. Fine. Yes. But it's obvious that the NDC has made up its mind. Mm. That it will not take part in a debate if it is organized by the IE. But Nana, let me ask one. you uh, I mean, you were interviewed last Wednesday, I believe, and, and, and you, you were reported to have said that the IE, you hadn't received any um, communication as to the yes. program outliners. Have yeah. you received as, as of, as of no. today? No. No. But, you know, I hear the IEA say that they normally announce their intentions and then they get a political party. That's what they have said. Mm. Uh, that, approach, is true? that approach is problematic. Because once you announce your intentions, mm. the media will be getting to the political parties to get their take. And you haven't discussed it with them. So they will, they will not have their take. And, and so that approach is problematic. It's interesting because uh, um, Mr. Gene Mensah apparently on Thursday is also reported to have said that they had actually dispatched such... Um, correspondence to the party and I believe we have a piece on that at the appropriate time I'm sure we'll get the okay. cue and then we'll play it just to be but please but carry I'm on. saying that for me it is very clear mm. that the NDC 
will not take part in a debate organized by the uh, I. Now, all of a sudden, NCC too. They also say they are going to organize. <laughs> I don't, you know, the NCC in matter. Nana, please. Let's no, no, I want us second. to finish no, our no, first one, then we I'm go into NCC. Yes, I'm not talking about the NCC. Right. I'm saying it's a fact uh -huh. that they have also said. Sure. That they also. So I'm saying that all of this quadrant. Mm. NDC saying we are, uh, the president's calendar, the party hasn't been consulted, uh, uh, neutrality, and I, blah, blah, NCC. It's very clear. Look, neutrality today, today, wasn't raised by NDC. Don't try oh, to please. Smear. Edwasa, please. Uh, please. Mr. Edwasa, please. Uh, uh, please. Uh, please. Uh, allow him to land. No, no, then. he's accusing this. the man as being NDC. This. Accusing who? Mr. Made, Napo. He made that statement. Oh, this, no. This man, this <laughs> no, that's what he's doing. <laughs> Mr. Edwasa, Mr. Edwasa, Mr. Napo, do you feel, do you feel he's accusing you? Exactly. Please carry on. What you need to do is, I think you gave him a drink. No, I brought one. Oh, you brought your own drink. Please, next time, don't allow him to bring his own drink. <laughs> Make we should sure give him know, something from here. He's drinking here. Very well. Now, uh, Abina, mm -hmm. the point is that the issues about IEA's neutrality has been brought into question, has it not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm saying that at this time, four or five months to elections, and all of these issues, neutrality, timing, the present schedule, the party, our NCCE, at this time, if we knew, uh, if NCC had the intention of organizing debates, they had to wait for IEA to announce their program before NCC realizes that, hey, we too, we can organize debates <laughs> and all of that. I think um, it will be difficult for us to have a full debate this year. Mm. I, 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 I can okay. see it very clearly. That's your conclusion. Now, um, Mr. Jackson, I think the, the, the previous speakers have said a great deal about um, the IEA um, debates, I want us to begin the discussion on the NCC issue. Now, the NCC has made these plans. I mean, w w the National Commission for Civic Education, yes, typically would do a number of things ahead of the elections and all, but this is really a novelty, if indeed it should come to pass, having parliamentary debates and presidential dialogues. That's what it says, not presidential debates, it's presidential dialogues. The NCCE. Do they have, uh, they, IEA for instance has raised issues about capacity. Do they have and resources uh, available to them? Do they have, do you think in your estimation, they have that capacity to actually undertake, for instance, the parliamentary debates they are saying they would want to do in all 275 constituencies? Because currently they even say that they don't have the funding that they would need for this. Okay. First of all, I want to make a short comment on what is Very well. Listen, let's talk about uh, the debate is not neutral uh, or whether the president's calendar or whether we are so saddened that uh, NDC won't take part is all the same politicking that goes on all the time when you are in power and comfortable you don't want a debate when you are not in power you want a debate <laughs> that is all that has happened when MPP was in power and comfortable, they didn't want a debate. When NDC was in power and comfortable, they, it is it is important to note. In power in 2012. Oh, hold on, on. I said mm -hmm. and comfortable. Why? President Mill said no debate. President Mahama, who had just now been appointed, now decides that you know what, I need the debate. This argument doesn't cut eyes with any of us. Whoever is in power and is co comfortable will not want a debate. That's fine. They can decide to do what they want to do. It is up to us, the public, to listen to whatever debate we are uh, privy to mm. and see how it contributes to making a decision that we have to Great. Make. That's a very good point. I was actually going to go there. Do, I mean, do the debates really inform the decisions of electorates really okay. in Ghana? Do now, you think? Now, the key thing to remember is this. The debate is on TV, uh. right? It's, the, the, it's, it's about visual cues, etc. The debate may influence a certain amount, but I don't think the debate itself, it's such a, uh, what do you call it? It's such the, uh, it is the make or break of any candidate, however uh, well or poorly they are, or you, yeah. are, you perform. There are other issues that uh. also come into play. So let's not, whilst the debate is good, 
let's not make this debate as if it will, it, it's, 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 that's what's going to decide the election. And anyway, like I've said, the two parties, where from where they sit, will decide whether they want to debate or not to debate. Mm. On the issue of the NCC, NCC the storm in the camp. I don't think the NC, uh, the IEA has a right to determine whether the NCC has the capacity or not. You are a private institution. You do what you want to do. You have your brand. Stick to it. Mm -hmm. NCC is a government institution. Or a state institution, sorry. It's a state institution. It has a certain mandate. If you stretch that mandate, it could cover debates. Do they have the resources? It's not for... It's, it, if they have the resources, they should do it. It will contribute to the discourse that is going on. Do, does the IE have the resources to organize a debate in every district and every... They don't. So if the NCC says he can do it, or he wants to do it, or he wants to raise money, allow them. This debate is as if there is... Uh, it's a zero-sum game. As if, uh, if you do it, then I can do it. Listen, anybody who has, who has the uh, uh, gravitas and the resources to do a debate should do it. It will contribute to the discussion. Mm. But don't come, uh, all this, I think that's a storm in the teacup. <coughs> I really think that we shouldn't expend too much energy on this issue. I he has no right to say to this that you can't do it. If NCC have the resources, NCC have the resources, they should do it, right? Mm. The rest of us who are the public will take the decision. We are thankful that people want to have debates. Debates are an important part of the process, but they are not the make or break of the process. Very well, Dr. Jayapal. No, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, if you remember when I was uh, giving my submission, I made reference to when this whole process started. I give, uh, uh, I made reference to 2000, 2004, and the number of times that we've had uh, these debates. Mm -hmm. And I did indicate that the reasons why we've had more or less fewer debates, which involves the two major political parties, have been the issue or the question of how neutral the platform is. Mm. And depending on which side of the pendulum that you swing to, and depending on the circumstance, normally you start to question the neutrality of what? The, the IE. Right. That said, I made reference to 2012, where I talked of Nana Jinajiman and uh, Opon Kroma. Yes. You see, Abuna, it's important for us to reflect back to how President Mama came into the scene. If you remember, Professor Mills, as at that time, who was the president, said he wasn't going for the debate. When President Mama came, he said he was going to go into the debate. What kind of discussion did he have with the IEA in terms of one way or the other? going against what his former boss. I mean, Mills didn't just say, I won't go into the debate just because he didn't want to. He, he had certain concerns. Mm. How were those concerns addressed by President, uh, for President Mahama? Or he just said, look, I don't care about the concerns of Mills. I just went into it, no matter what the concerns were. That is why I'm saying that for most Ghanaians, post the debate, where you have two individuals for the two major political parties, for some of us, we shudder to say that maybe there was an arrangement, and it's a legitimate call. Maybe there was an arrangement. An arrangement, especially within the context of the happenings. How the whole thing was fashioned out and stuff like that. And we have two individuals. One strong NDC, one strong MPP. Not just ordinary people in the political party. And, that, and, that, one and that in our context would be expected because, well, you know, we, are, we usually it are it at it pain to constitute even panels for whatever. No, 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 no. You're looking at no, 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 no. having a certain balance. That is where you have a problem. The problem is that that platform is not for NDC and PP. That platform is for Ghanaians. But that's where Ghanaian. our politics so has when, gotten to. When, when it happens that way, then it even becomes problematic. Because it's an arrangement. But Dr. Jinapo, yes. I, I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But isn't it a reality that the country is so politicized on every issue that even constituting a panel for anything, you're looking at how well that, balanced that, it is. That, that is. You're where, making all those that, considerations. That is, that is where the IE fits into the, the, the whole uh, uh, paradigm in the sense that the country is so polarized on political lines. You have a civil society like IE which for some reason is not even resourced by what the government of Ghana or the people of Ghana. So they want to provide Ghanaians this platform. Mm -hmm. So why can't they stand their feet 
and get somebody who is really what neutral and not an arrangement. That's it. You ask this but anyway, this, about this arrangement thing is, is it's something you're speculating. We are, I, we I are, think. I think. And there's a there's a legitimate reason, there's a legitimate <laughs> reason to that. But you see, beyond that, uh, 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 Abna, you see, IEA is a think tank. You know that, mm -hmm. and it's a research institute. You ask the important question: how, What has been the impact? of this debate when it comes to the choice I mean, of, the choice of mm. a candidate. Right. I would have expected that by now, the IEA should have come out with a report or a paper or whatever it is, that look, based on these debates, this number of people were informed or swayed based on, I mean, they should have done that. And that in itself would have been a good reason for even political parties like the NDC to sit and say, look, this is the report. John Mahama became president because of this debate, or he moved these people because of this debate. They would think twice. Mm. This is the report to MPP. Look, the opposition party, the NDC in 2008, was able to win this election because of the debate. I think all these things need to be done. But if you ask me, the NCC, I mean, seriously, I think even the timing of the NCC coming into the, the fray is it's wrong. I mean, any serious person will sit there and say, no. Why, why now? <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why now? I mean, I don't, they, I don't think there's anything wrong with the NCC engaging in what they call a dialogue. And it's important to understand, look, dialogue and debates are quite different. Dialogue, you're having a conversation. Debates, that's one of what's opposing mm. what they do. I think if the IEA is able to convince the various parties and convince the country that, look, we, are, we do our best and we think that we'll be able to provide you with the best, and we are providing the two main parties, the president and the opposition leader, a platform to have a three-hour, I mean, discussion about how to move this country forward. I think it to be in the best, the, the best interest of this country. But very as well. things starts now, I mean, I'm very skeptical if we can have any IE president. Very well. Uh, this is New Day Saturday edition. We are continuing the show. But before we go on to look at um, the alleged move of some $250 million, uh, from the Bank of Ghana to a private commercial bank. We'll take some quick uh, comments from our viewers and listeners. Um, somebody saying, okay, this is actually Tony Nunu from Shama. He says, Abna, uh, no, both NDC and NPP are the same. There's no angel between them. We should pick PPP led by Dr. Parkwesi Indum. We should learn from Benin. Uh, that's Tony from Shama. The NDC knew or knows that the questions that will be raised at the IEA uh, platform for John Mahama, the president, uh, he cannot answer them because of their failed promises. Ghanaians should shine their eyes and vote NDC out. This is Aliu from Bully in Wa. Now, the NDC has nothing to debate on or to tell Ghanaians. That is why they are running away from the IEA debate. May Allah save us from hardship, create loot and share NDC government. And this from Gafaru in Shishigu, Tamale. Abna, IEA uh, approach was wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get this. I agree with Mr. Jackson uh, comment, comments. Again, th this is quite not clear, so I can't read this. It says, Abna, another one says, Abna, tell Mr. Dwasari if he is not aware, Kofi Adam questioned the neutrality of IEA. Uh, behind, on Behind the News, he made reference to the comments made by Dr. Jampo that Professor Na Nana, um, I believe the Minister of Education, leaked certain documents to the President. That is why she was rewarded as a minister in that IE. I didn't say that. No, no, not, not to you. It's uh, not to you. This is to Mr. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 As a matter of fact, Dr. Ahmed Jnapo's questions requires an answer. Please answer him. He says about how to collect Woyomi money if opposition were to be in power. Okay, this is back to Woyomi. Um, Abna, I'm hugely riddled with fear and sadness inside me. Having taught for 18 months, but was paid for three months. I feel that I've been exploited in my own country under the watch of uh, the president, the same man I voted for in 2012 elections. Go for Woyomi's money to pay me. This is Seth in Hopoi. Uh, now, the NDC has nothing to debate. Okay, I, I read this already. Um, I'm wondering if Ghanaian media could ask President Mahama the question, have you taken a bribe before? Ghanaian media, please upgrade your thoughts. This is hashtag no sycophant, and this is Silas Owusu from Kumase. Uh, last one, and then we go into our discussion. So bad, politics has rendered almost all our nonpartisan institutions political, and I wonder what will follow next. For greed and selfishness sake, when they are in power, they are okay, 
and when they stand at the <coughs> other side, they are not. Forgetting they may change hands the next minute. Me, I'm just watching and wondering why the citizen needs doesn't come paramount to this, to government. This is from Steve in Trade Fair. Okay, we'll go back to the comments, but now we are looking at Dr. Mahamudu Bahumiya's um, call for a parliamentary inquiry into the decision by the Minister of Finance to move 250 million United States dollars, uh, proceeds of a euro bond, into a private bank. Now, in Dr. Bahumiya's opinion, he's saying that uh, the move or the decision is illegal as it breaches some provisions of the Bank of Ghana Act, specifically Section 53, which mandates the bank to hold all foreign exchange reserves. Now, the Minister of Finance, uh, Mr. Tekbe, has actually come out to respond to these statements and has justified the move, saying that it was intended for the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. So, this is the issue we are discussing now on this segment. Mr. Dwasari, I'll, I'll start from you. Legalization came from NPP. No, I'm, so I'm, I'm, they, they should come and we will respond. Well, I'm the moderator and I choose to start from you. I, wow. this is <laughs> I, I think it will, it will distort there because we need to know the perspective they, are, they brought to no, so This is what has you come out. What is, what, is your, what is your assessment of the situation? Well, for me in the first place, um, Dr. Baumia was so wrong and... Um, for, for someone who's occupied the position of a deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Um, a lot is expected of him because he should, uh, he should always come with the facts. What is it we are talking about? We are talking about funds that before it came in, uh, we knew what the fund was meant to uh, or the, to, the, be used for. to be used for. Okay, it was meant for the seed money for the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. So, yes, the money is for the government of Ghana, the state of Ghana, but assigned to a particular entity. And this entity was created out of a parliamentary uh, uh, act. Okay, so they have their mandates, they have their, uh, uh, what do they call it, functions. parameters, functions, and whatever that they are supposed to operate as an entity. So, was it the Bank of Ghana that Dr. Baumia was taking on, or it was the GIIF that uh, the, the, uh, Dr. Baumia was taking on? Because the money belongs to the GIIF. Okay, and they can choose what to do with their money. It is a choice. They can decide on what they have a board, and the board has a, a decision making uh, a mandate to decide on what to do with the money. So, if some money is sitting in an account and it's not yielding any uh, interest, and they thought it was, it, it, it was more prudent to move the money into a commercial account that will yield interest for them over a period before decisions are taken as to how to disperse the funds. For me, um, the issue about whether or not the uh, government uh, goes, because look, are we saying that if this money was still kept at the Bank of Ghana, the government of Ghana will not go and borrow like uh, from from the market like treasury bills will not, will not buy treasury bills if the money was still kept there because government would borrow anyway from uh, like uh, 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 what do you call it from treasury bills okay so this is money that is committed to an entity so to make it look like oh uh, government went out to go and borrow money and paid X amount of as interest, whereas its money is sitting there, and it's, uh, it makes so that the whole thing so, sounds so simplistic, as if government can easily go and take that money and use it anyhow, apply it to pay workers or use it to solve electricity problem or all the other issues that they are raising, the populist issues that they are raising. 
It doesn't work like that. Okay, there have been times in this country we went for euro bonds and the monies were misapplied. We have seen that. This government has committed itself to uh, some kind of fiscal discipline and told itself and other uh, financial institutions that are supporting our system that we will discipline ourselves. We will not be over crossing our bounds to go and take monies and misapply them. It helped us kelter. We will stick to the rules. Mm -hmm. So for anybody to make it sound like, oh, this money is certain that the contractors have not been paid. So we could easily have used part of that money to pay contractors. That is not meant for paying contractors. So Dr. Baumier, in the first place, lost the argument. Because it's even turning out. The monies that were given were not, in, even though indexed in foreign exchange, was not in foreign estate. As of yesterday, I heard that on Joy FM yesterday. So I'm sure with time, more clarity, after especially the responses from the uh, Ministry of Ministry. Finance has you know, come to throw a lot of light on the whole issue. And I believe that slowly Dr. Baumia is backing out. His argument is being completely <laughs> Okay, so about the backing out of Bamiya, let's leave that to No, no, I mean, you can tell. In right. the last three days, he hasn't spoken. He's only writing tweets and all kinds of things on Facebook here and there. You know, and, and for me, that is the sad part. Probably we'll get there when we get to the uh, aspect of the Muslim issue. Which, Why are you preempting that discussion? No, we'll it was eventually. part of the list it is, you it said. Is, yes, uh -huh. it we, is. We will deal with that. Because I think that incessantly, He's been, I don't know, he's been the, the, the okay. put on the chopping board for the NPP. Like, he goes to throw issues out there, and by the time he comes out of it, he himself is so totally battered. Because they, 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 they don't situate on mm. facts, they put situated on sensation, they blow the whole thing out of proportion, clarity then comes up. Very well. And, and, and somehow, they don't, they don't, they don't, I, I, I'm not sure that. If, if we lived in the country, and again, I said it yesterday, in, as, part, as much as Dr. Baumia is a, a politician, you see, there are ethics, you are a lawyer. I'm sure when you are sitting here in this room, you wouldn't throw your ethics away because you are doing, uh, you are the moderator for... Uh, I cannot. TV. You cannot. Thank you for that. And my point you would want us to go into the Islamic comment and no, everything. No, so not yet. We'll wrap come up there, a bit and wrap up not, for us and then let's please, have I am saying that you see your ethics are very key. Dr. Bonia is a banker who has risen to the point of becoming a deputy governor of a bank. And I thought that some of these issues issues you should have left it to the politicians like Nana Kumia and some of the uh, MPs. To raise. But he is a citizen please, of the country please, as well, please, and he's minded please. as to I how. I am not saying that. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm are used. giving him a free consultancy or advice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Very well. No, no, no. Let me conclude. Give me a minute. Please conclude. I'm then, saying yes. that. You see, when you are in a particular profession, your ethics must lead you. You see, where Dr. Bamia goes to see figures from the Bank of Ghana and gets privy to information, as I mean, from 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 such places. And the next moment he's on the platform putting them out. It defeats his ethics as a banker. Because what you are telling Ghanaians and other people is that you cannot be trusted with figures, with discrete issues. And mind you, the reason why the financial institutions don't just come in, because of speculations, one issue can even cause stock market to go up or down. Okay, it can affect uh, transactions on the stock market just by putting in unguarded information out there. So as a banker, the first thing as ethic that he should eschew is confidentiality. But so far, he hears anything from Bank of Ghana, quickly he's out there and everybody is hearing. And I think if he loses this election one more time, to find a job in any bank in this world, <laughs> Let's not go into the realm of speculations, please. Well. Um, uh, uh, Nanakumia, please, I want you to respond to this. So Dr. Baumia, Put out this um, issue the finance ministry has come to justify it and uh, subsequently we've had other um, bits and pieces of information coming in to justify saying what is did did was was there any breach of the bank of ghana act well thank you uh, abidam 
<laughs> it's a very sad situation. Now we are being told Dr. Babmia is being given lessons in banking ethics by my good friend Edward Sari. Well, that's okay. But um, let's look at it. Let's look at Dr. Bamia's uh, pedigree in banking and finance. Dr. Baumia criticized the way inflation was being calculated in this country, that the basket was not representative enough. The NDC said they didn't know what he was talking about. But subsequently, after Baumia's critique, the basket that is used to calculate inflation today in this country has been changed as a direct result of Dr. Baumia's critique. Dr. Baumia told them, when as a result of the <coughs> reckless deficit in 2012, the city was falling like a, 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 a fruit that, that has come down, coconut fruit, and they had brought some measures. You remember that the, the, those bank, bank of, you can't take your own money and blah, blah. You remember those ones? Mm -hmm. Dr. Baumia told them that those measures will not work. And indeed, those measures did not work, and they had to withdraw them. <coughs> Dr. Bamia told them that if you continue the way you were with your deficit spending, the CD was going to fall to four CDs by the middle of 2004. And indeed, that is exactly what happened. By the middle of 2004, the CD had by fallen to... By the middle of 2014, 14. the CD had fallen to even beyond the four CDs. It fell to four cities, 50 pesos, record high. It was the, on that year, the whole world, the city was the worst performing national currency. Dr. Bamia had predicted it six months earlier. Dr. Bamia told them that if you continue the way you were going, with the deficit spending, and, and spending that was not promoting <coughs> growth, you end up going to the IMF. And indeed, they ended up going to the IMF. This man, is somebody that every day you should go and consult. Because all that he tells you comes into fruition. What he told you on inflation, what he told you about the Bank of Ghana measure, what he told you about the CD rate, what he told you about the IMF, all of it come through. If you were a wise government, every day you will call the man. Charlie, so what's up? This one, this one. That's what, that's what I will do. Now, this particular matter, you see, there are legal issues. What Bamiya is calling for is that let's have an inquiry. So he's not even blaming every, anybody. He said that the issues involved are such that we need clarity. So let's have an inquiry. There are legal issues involved. Somebody will tell you that the Bank of Ghana Act has been violated. That section uh, uh, 50, 53 has been violated. Another person will tell you that, they, that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the financial administration regulation, section 21, have been violated. Another person will tell you, well, according to this other section, we can do that. So there are legal issues that have to be resolved. Beyond that, there is this general issue where public institutions that have custody of public funds, government money, go and invest these monies into treasure bills. Treasure bills lending back to the government. And they earn 12%, 13%. And the government pays for borrowing that money, 22%, 23%. Mr. Thompson is a banker, so Mr. Jackson is a banker. But Abena, this is the enormous situation we have on our hands. This 2250 is the tip of the iceberg. If you go into it, you would find that district assemblies, people holding statutory funds, are investing those government monies into treasury bills. Because they are lending the monies back to the government. Because the government is borrowing so much the treasury bill, which is the rate that government pays, is so high that when the DC gets a, a, the, the common fund allocation of, say, 20 million Ghana cities, he calculates these 20 million Ghana cities from government. If I'm able to delay payments to contractors 
and I'm able to delay this awarding of the contract of this school block and so on for three months. And I put this 20 million, I lend it back to government. I would get 12 percent, and government will be paying interest of 22 percent. It's widespread. Indeed, when you go to Nigeria. So, why have we allowed such a practice to carry that's on? That's what Baumia is raising. This is what Baumia is raising. But this, this, this predates um, this perhaps. Uh, but Baumia is bringing up this. That's why the it. man should be commended. Now, when you go to Nigeria today. Nana, please, you, you should be wrapping up for us so that we allow the others. Be, we, we are just about my, 20 my minutes. Boss, <laughs> uh, as I talk for you. But it doesn't matter. He's my boss, so it's okay. But, Abena, when you go to Nigeria today, 80% mm -hmm. of the problems that we have in Nigeria is this matter. When you go to the EFCC, which is investigating, public bodies investing public money into government securities and scheming of their interests and government pay. And 80% of the investigation, all this, you hear somebody has taken two billion. It's not that the man went into, it's government money that they invest in securities for six months and cream of so Buhari now is ordering all those banks to pay back their interest to government. Now, you look at this specific case. You go and borrow money from Eurobond at 8.5% in 2014, three years ago. If you didn't need the money, why did you go and borrow? So for over almost two years, these monies that you've gone to and borrowed on the Eurobond, and paying 8.5 percent is sitting idle. So you say, ah, this money is sitting idle. It has sat idle for almost two years. So let me transfer it to because you know the transfer was done just mm -hmm. at, towards the end of last year, 2015. Mm -hmm. So the money had been sitting in there idle for over one and a half years, and we're paying 8.5 to Eurobond. And that's why they're saying they took a prudent measure, which was yeah. But to why sure. would you go and take the money, pay 8.5, and keep it idle for one and a half years? Before suddenly you realize, ah, why is this money sitting here? Very well. You, you know, and then what did they decide to do? They, they say, we'll give it to Ghana Infrastructure Fund. And they also give it to, they, the money is transferred directly to a private bank. And of course, this private bank, it wouldn't let the money sit idle. So they invest it in treasure bills, which is the, what is the new game in town. That's what it's paying. <laughs> and then so, they get a, government says get an interest of 23 million from that. But... The treasury bill rates, government is paying over $50 million from the interest that is paid on treasury bill. So what are we doing to ourselves? And where that 23, is it coming to government or who is it going to? And why is government's money being taken to a bank that will invest it in treasury bills and give government 23 and government will then go and pay interest on the money that is its own money that it is borrowing? That is the issue. But be that as it may, but is not saying anybody has stolen anybody. He says that, let's have an inquiry. For all you know, this matter, for all you know, is happening at district assemblies. But it's happening at Common Fund. It's happening at Get Fund. It's happening at HIPIC. For all you know, it's a major. Somebody said, people earn 500 cities and they build houses. Let's go and find out. Hmm. This man, Baumia, is helping you. He's helping the Ghanaian taxpayer to safeguard their monies. He's helping the government to ensure prudence macro policy and financial policy very well, you should Mr. be clapping Nana. for the man very well Nana. we Nana will take a break here. at this point we'll come back why, to I mean, why don't you want the good things to be said to the people we will come back um we're continuing the uh, the discussions here it's just about 17 minutes to the top of the hour 10 o'clock where we'll be drawing the curtain so we'll be wrapping up briefly i'll take some more messages from viewers and listeners uh, this is coming from Augustine in Asante Akemago. He says, it has come to my realization that the IEA debate is made to disgrace our president to be. Ayarikov has come to stay. Um, Abna, when you talk about corruption, what comes to mind is a politician. How about the civil servant who wants a tip before doing what he is paid to do? How about the media who takes huge money from politicians just to skew a story to their side? The amount of state resources that goes down the drain in the public sector daily because of corruption is none compared to what the politicians do. My point is we are all as guilty as the government, politicians, etc. But the president should also be a bit more stern dealing with it. This is um, Mensa Thompson, MP aspirant for Kwadaso constituency. 
Um, as somebody else says, Abna, both NPP and NDC are corrupt. They are all there to throw more dust into our eyes. No to NDC, no to NPP. Let's all Ghanaians think outside the box. This is from Peter, coming from Cape Coast, Polly. NDC is running away from the debate. Shame to them, Bernard from Ashanti in the Ashanti Kuta in the Volta region. Um, somebody is saying here, this is uh, Patrick Awole. He says, NDC is good at adverts, uh, stealing, embezzling, corruption, bribe been unfavorable policies against teachers and uh, not to debate, hence their decision not to take part. Okay, we'll come back to our discussions. Now, Mr. Joe Jackson, just about seven minutes to wrap up, so please let's do it. Unfortunately, we'll have to <coughs> do that quickly. quickly. Exactly. Your take on this issue, the Euro bond proceeds. Well, a number of things. If the money had been given to the, uh, um, uh, the um, investment the, fund, the IF and the fund had been constituted and it had its own investment board, this would be really a difficult issue to deal with. Mm. But so long as that body was not in place, in place. and the money had been, was still within the government, under Custody. the government's control, there are a number of issues that you, 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 the numbers don't add up. And there's some, that, that's, that's the biggest problem, the numbers don't add up. There's even, as, a, as a somebody in the financial sector, there's a question that kept hitting me, which is this. What was the capital stated in this institution that you took 250 and gave it to them? Simply put, if all your worth as an individual is 100 CDs, I don't take 100 CDs and give it to you. So we have to look at, there are multiple levels. I mean, some of the issues, they mean, I won't rehash them again. Mm. The numbers don't add up, uh, especially because uh, if you look at the statement of this institution, they were heavily invested in uh, 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 treasury bills. So if you look at how much we must have paid out in treasury bills on this amount, and how much we received, the numbers don't add up. Then you ask yourself, 250 million, what was their stated capital? How can you give them 200? So there are questions. Not all of them have been answered adequately, right? And we have to say that we need a bit more information. Who took that investment decision? What was the basis of evaluation? Because the numbers just don't add up. Mm. Well, that's a Japan. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not well versed when it comes to issues of finance, but I think there are two major things that uh, comes out of this issue. One, uh, the statement being made by uh, Dr. Baumia needs to be looked at within a certain context. The context being that there's a vice presidential candidate who uh, wants his party to come into power, and he believes that the NDC is not managing the economy well. I mean, i.e., uh, the NDC is not competent. And he uses this to buttress his point that, look, you have a government that goes to take hand one million euro bond, which, uh, from what we have been told, was somewhere in 2014. One billion. One billion mm -hmm. euro bond. And today, that government is releasing $250 million to a private institution at this rate. So when you compare how much was taken in terms of rates and how much is being given out, then it doesn't make sense. So it more or less goes to reaffirm his position that the NDC is what is incompetent. The fact of the matter is that when it comes to the law, I, I would have wished that by now somebody should have taken this case up at the court. Because uh, it's, it's about law. I mean, what the law says. And we have institutions and bodies that are in a position to, to interpret the law. What I think is more revealing within the context of this discussion is uh, what Nana Kumia uh, mm -hmm. uh, spoke to, which is the issue of the district assembly where you have a, I mean, of course, it's an allegation which is, which is being made now. Do, do, but to interrupt you, I'm yes, not even talking about district assembly. Yes, I'm sir. talking about all government, kinds of public institutions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Who are giving public sure. money. <coughs> yes. and, but because of the high rate yes. from treasury bills, because yes. the government is borrowing so much, these people come under the temptation to take that money and put it in treasury bills for three months, for six months, and reap enormous. So it's basically, government money is being 
lent to government mm. and government is and, paid. And, and that is why things are it's, 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 it's a serious issue right. which needs to be investigated. And this is just part as, of it. As, quick, as, as quickly is just part of it. as possible. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, we talked about corruption at the beginning of this uh, session. And if, if something of this sort is going on, then, I mean, I don't know where we are as a country when it comes to the, the fight against corruption. But as I said, I mean, with regards to uh, uh, Baumia's issue, I, I think uh, somebody should 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 uh, more or less test the law, take mm. the case to court and, and let them Let's let see the what comes out of it. it. Very well. We'll be moving on. We have just about uh, some five minutes or so to go, but I'll be taking some messages and we'll come back to quickly discuss the next Baumia issue. Now, this is as uh, um, Augustine from Akima Gogo. He says, Nana Komia is speaking well. Please teach your men to do the same anytime they come to the studios. Um, Abna, Dr. Baumia is not only a prophet in economy, but also a prophet in politics. He always prophesies about the economy, which always comes into fruition. What the NDC knows best is by chastising, is chastising Dr. Baumia just to run him down. Hmm. NDC should recommend Baumia for, or commend ba Baumia for always telling the truth. This is Gafaru from Tamale. Um, and you know, I've read this already. Uh, delay of allowance, salary, and contract payments is really real on the ground. National service allowance, contract, and district assembly, even salaries of some public <coughs> service workers. These monies are held in banks to gain interest. This is in Kumase. Hi, Abna. Please, we got, we've got to do things right in this country. I just have one question for Mr. Kojo Eduasari. And this question is only the word why, with lots of question marks. So why? <laughs> That's the question. Jeff from Takwa. Dr. Mahamud Dubaumia has lost credibility about the euro bond transfer because the money um, is belong, belongs to the, the, the Ghana in, sorry, infrastructure, infrastructure Investment infrastructure. Fund. Yes. Great. So quickly, we move on to the comments. Um, I think we discussed this last week. Mr. Baumia's comments, or Dr. Baumia's comments, sorry, um, about religious balance at the presidency. Now, the aftermath of that is that there's a certain civil society group called, um, I'll, I'll get the name and read it out, but it's, it's, it's an Islamic civil society, I believe, and they are endorsing what Mr. Dr. Baumia said. And uh, it's raised questions as to the significance of such endorsements as we go into November <coughs> 7 as we gradually move towards that. Um, Mr. Edwasa, you were keen to <laughs> get on to the matter, so I want to know I'm, I'm just push, putting it to you right away. <laughs> no, I could let her that. It would be good. You Since see? Started from anyway, it would be good. Well, now, I'm starting with you. You're, you're not taking it. Start. Please, <laughs> carry on. Well, you see, uh, again, you're quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm a bit uh, And it would have to be brief because we are almost about me sure. Because I think the MPP is totally I mean, creating some credibility challenges mm. for the man because you see he's he so far hasn't been able to carve a particular area in this whole campaign structure for himself because he tries on one moment you know try to use the students front and he, before long he goes to drop something that puts him into trouble one point it was 37 billion uh, uh, Ghana debt which later the Bank of Ghana boss came to debunk. Uh, now this uh, recent, uh, uh, whatever they call it, this 250 million thing, which is blasting off in his face, uh, this Muslim thing. Because you see, we've had President Kufo and uh, the late uh, Ali Umama, that combination at the Flagstaff House. I want to find out what special how how what was the special effect it had on islam as a whole in this country and we've had president rollins and Atta Mills who were christians in that period we had two holidays approved for muslims okay so we've also us. had hajj challenges mm. under president Luma, uh, uh, president Ma, uh, kufo and Ali mahama until president mahama and President Mills came and made sure now we have Hajj Village, which today manages to house people, pilgrims who are going mm. to Saudi Arabia, and we've kept that particular challenge that Muslims used to have, among other issues that relate to their, the, the Muslim sect. My question, quickly, is that what kind of Muslim is Dr. Baumia looking for? 
to be pa to partner the, because in the Muslim structure itself, we have the Ahmadis, we have the Tijaniyas, we have the uh, Asunas. Which one of them is suitable <laughs> for Dr. Baumia to become a running mate? Because when you start selecting, then you are also going to pry and find out which Christian should be at the flat staff house. Is it a Mormon? Is it a Jehovah Witness? It should it be a whatever? And then now, by extension, we go to ATR. Should it be a Tigari? Should it be an Akonodi or whatsoever? You see, then we veer into absurdities. So I think this call should not be part of our body politic. It is uncalled for. Dr. Wamiya once again goofed on this matter. And I think we should put it to rest one more time. Dr. Janapal, please, your take on this. Quickly, uh, yes, uh, two uh, minutes. Uh, the, the, the statement, first of all, is, uh, for me, it's Wait, not one necessary. Minute. It's not necessary because uh, I think Dr. Baumia was selected as a, a running mate not because he's a Muslim, mm. but because of his competence. And uh, if you remember, not too long ago, we've had uh, instances where people have called for people to vote for them based on their ethnic affiliation and stuff like that. These are things that uh, will, will pop up, but I don't think uh, they are necessary. That said, I, mean, I think we shouldn't be hypocrites mm. as Ghanaians to more or less uh, 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 put it in the public domain that these discussions don't go on. In fact, in this country, people vote for people because they belong to the same ethnic uh, 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 affiliation. Mm -hmm. we, people vote for people because they belong to the same tribe. People vote for people because they come from what? The same religious background. So it is not surprising that Dr. Baumia is saying that, look, vote for me uh, so that we'll have a balance. I mean, I mean you know, more serious note, even mm -hmm. in terms of that balance, I mean, in this country, we have about 71% who are Christians. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have about 5% who are traditionalist and Muslim communities about probably 20 something percent mm. you know so I agree with uh, Honorable Edwards that when you Wrapping want to up. do that then you will definitely be opening a, 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 a can of worms a, a, a canon mm. for, or of worms but I think uh, the politics should be based on issues very well Mr. Joe Jackson your take on this <laughs> such endorsements coming from uh, an identified group okay the challenge you have really is this that even though uh, like my colleague said Dr. Janapo said we know that these discussions take place. When they are put in the public domain under a certain set of circumstances, they create difficulties. Mm -hmm. Because then all of a sudden, so are we to create balance, is it going to be, are we, are we going to say it's, uh, 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 we always must have a Christian Muslim ticket? I mean, it, it, the issues are terrible. I mean, and I'm, and you've, we, we, we've just come out of a situation where somebody says, vote for me because of my ethnic background and there's a lot of them were lambasted because of, of it, it really i tell you this what worries me is this religious differences are played up by politicians and sometimes the result can be dire it's a genie which we shouldn't let out of the box because we may not be able to rein it back in i think the comment was unfortunate even though we know it is part of what takes place mm. to balance a ticket and 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 and, and worldwide it's not just uh, it's not just Ghana worldwide in the US there are always issues of balancing the ticket right. and various considerations mm. but this uh, uh, religious call to vote has me fundamentally worried and it's a genie that would like to keep in the bottle mm. great no no, no. Well, thank you, uh, Abida. Um, look, Dr. Bamiya's statement, various people, individuals, groups have expressed their uh, opinions on the statement. Some have endorsed it, some have not endorsed it. And today, my colleagues here have also given their opinions on it. There's no problem. Um, before I proceed, I'd just like to quote what Dr. Baumia said. And I'm quoting him. I said, another major issue that I want to bring to your attention is that if we look at the Flagstaff House today, it does not reflect the people of Ghana in terms of religion. We are in this country living peacefully and nicely, Christians and Muslims. So we believe in the NPP that Christians and Muslims should work together. And that is why Whenever we pick a flag bearer as a Christian, we pick a Muslim as vice. And when we come to pick a Muslim as flag bearer, we pick a Christian as vice. 
So inshallah, Nana, when Nanado Akufado becomes president, he will swear with the Bible and enter the flagstaff, and I will swear with the Quran and enter the flagstaff house. Okay, this is exactly what he said. Now, I, mean, I think, sorry to catch in a number briefly, but I think the challenge with that is even the Muslim and the Christian uh, religious groups is not representative of the whole of Ghanaians. Like Mr. Idwa Sari mentioned, there are other people of certain religious beliefs. There's no doubt about that. Now, but in wrapping up, yes, just, now yes. what Baumia is calling for clearly is inclusion and balance. In this country, we are always looking for inclusion and balance, are we not? We are looking for gender balance. So people will say, let's appoint two women, let's state it in the law that there should be two women, otherwise they may not be women. Uh, there's a north, north and south balance on the presidential tickets. The NPP, except in one election, since uh, even before when I was a schoolboy, has always had a Muslim Christian balance. Always. Victor Usu had Tolona, uh, Edu Bohini had uh, for, uh, Alassan, was a Muslim. In 96, 1996, we went for the Great Alliance. But in 2000, Kufu had Alui Mahama. He had Alui Mahama again. Akufado had Baumia. So we've always had this balance. Mm. But Mia is just saying that if you vote for the NPP, you are going to get a certain balance in terms of religion. Mm. Same as we are looking for gender balance, same as we're looking for north-south balance and so on. No, if no. people feel 